Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to TFYLP episode number 55. Uh, last episode, I mentioned we were trying to do this weekly, or at least every other week. Looks like it's going to be every two weeks, just with the busy schedules that we all have, or at least I have since I'm hosting. Uh, joining me tonight, we have uh, Mariah Baby. Say hello. Hi. And uh, we have Sideburn 2. What's up, everybody? And Natsume Ryu. Hi. All right, and tonight we're going to talk to you about Transformers. Anybody else excited? I like Transformers. Yeah, I hope hope we all do, or else we're wasting our time. All right, uh, Go Bots. <laughs> Yay, GoBot! Leader 1 is my favorite. Although I always like Turbo, too. Okay, nobody else want to throw any GoBot references in there? Uh, no besides the, besides the name, I don't know, Psycho. I know that one. <laughs> Alright. Uh, before we get into the news, I guess we'll start with our Ouch My Wallet segments. Um, I will go first since I do not have much. The only thing I've picked up in the last two weeks, I uh, actually picked up today, was Transformers Regeneration 1, Issue 91. Um, I know we haven't talked much about the comics on this podcast, but yeah, that came out today and I bought it, and it's like the only thing I've bought in the last two weeks besides food and gas. Got my oil changed today. Uh, anybody have any discussion about the comic book? Anybody else reading this series? Am I the only one? Um, Guard Convoy was, so if he was here, he would... Um, I, I remember he said he liked how brutal he got. I stopped. I I offered to read his books, but I never got around to it. So I haven't. Well, I listened to another podcast today. Then they were talking about the book, and it was actually the episode they recorded last week. I don't know how they got the book early; it didn't come out till today. Um, but they said that you really couldn't spoil this issue because nothing happened, and I would say they are crazy. Uh, they're those people who, if there's not a fight, nothing happens. Uh, there's a lot of story elements got introduced. Uh, you know, the new new story arcs were set up, and a lot of characters set up. Uh, it, it was an interesting issue. I mean, yeah, there was no action, there was no fighting, but there was a lot of stuff being set up, and a lot of anticipation being built. And I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It wasn't the you know pile of crap that they had me anticipating when listening to their show. Um, all right, who wants to go next with their out my wallet? I'll be easy enough to do. Okay. I haven't bought anything, but I made sure to check Target, and we finally got a Shockwave in. A uh, Generation Shockwave. Or not Generations. Friggin' Transformers Prime Shockwave. And I've considered buying him. I just don't have the money right now. Because I love, I love the Transformers Prime design, and I like his little twirly gun. But I'm also... I think the Takara version looks a lot better with the purple. But then I think about, hey, if I'm going to get a Takara version, then I need to save up and I get, need to get that Takara Brawl because it's the most gorgeous toy ever. So you didn't actually buy anything this week? You just saw no. something? No. I saw him. But that's enough because I, I, that's, the only, that's the only new toy that my stores have had. So literally, if there was anything I would have bought, that would have been it. Everything else the, is old. Have you seen the Cyberverse uh, Legion class uh, a Hunger? Because I can't find that toy anywhere. I don't think I've seen it, no. no I've just okay. seen the Twin Strike. Okay, what, what is that thing you're petting there? This is Buta. Buta. I have no clue what that is. Other than it looks that's, like the, that's the one that was John's, um, and it was for the, it's from Garen Lagon, and I made him take a picture with it, and he hated it, so it ended up coming home with me, and then he's like, well, you can just keep it, and I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> It's the only stuffed animal it's, I have now. It's rather creepy. He's he's a pig mole, right? And he's blind, so he actually has a little blind glass. Well, he's angry. This is an angry he's Buta. angry and blind? Yes. Because apparently he actually takes his glasses off once in the anime. Okay, that's kind of creepy. It's oh, but he's too. so cute! Okay, yes, it is. Speaking of cute, Michael. What did you get to do all the way out? <laughs> All right. Like that transition. Trying to segue here so, best I can. So, um, I didn't spend any money, but Economist on Twitter, Woo! Had tweeted, yeah, had tweeted that he found wave two of the Creo microchangers, 
And I haven't seen Wave 1. I haven't seen a Creo Micro Changer since the preview line. Um, so I just made a comment like, you know, I haven't even seen Wave 1, sad face. He responded, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to rely on the internet for this. And so he sends me a, uh, a private message on Twitter, or a direct message, and says, and offers to get me the one of my choosing and transform away it for me. And so I chose Bulkhead, bulkhead and uh, I'm actually planning on opening it and building it while we're on the podcast. And uh, it was really cool of them because you know, I liked the preview line. I haven't found an ounce of Creo since, like, December. Um, so that was really awesome. I mentioned them on our last show, but I managed to find the combiners and Wave 1 uh, when I went to visit Duran one weekend. And I picked up, you know, the Brood of Christian Superion, and the only loose ones I picked up, the individuals, was Blast Off, the other Superion member, whatever his name was, and Bludgeon. And believe it or not, even though it's been two weeks, I still have not opened the Superion set or the other two individual figures. I just have Bruticus sitting here on my desk. Well, you did yeah. a good job with Bruticus, so I, I can understand. I can yeah, I, with this and accept it. I really wanted to get those combiners and everything, and I'm going to have to... Uh... I guess I'm going to have to go to the internet. And I've went to Target, I've went to Walmart. They're nowhere here in Florida. The only stores i found that are carrying them are Toys R Us. Uh, yeah, I've yet I don't to find a Target or Walmart that even has them. My Target um, actually got them about two months ago, and then I bought the Bruticus, and then I returned them because I couldn't. I was like, the only thing I wanted and out of it was Brawl, and I was like, I can't justify spending $12 on, on a, a Brawl that's an inch and a half high. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I bought this Bruticus just for the little swindle. <laughs> Maybe I'll be That's able to find like a, a loose one. Well, then I bought, the, even though swindle was the only one I wanted, I still bought a blast off just so I could have all five members of the team. And you did a good job putting them together. I, yeah. I won it again, but my store is somebody's already bought the Bruticus, so I can't buy it now. <laughs> yeah, I put every piece on here. Even the extra heads. I wish my camera were better. So yeah, I worked all the pieces of all five guys into one combiner. Great. All right, well, Michael, anything else besides... That's it. That's, That's the first it. Transformer I've gotten since January. It's Creo Bulkhead. All right, this is a short House My Wallet segment this week. <laughs> what about you, Amber? Uh, I think I'm ready. Um, starting off first... Um, I guess starting off first is is my uh, on topic, and I guess I'll just talk about it because it's still actually steeping. Um, Adagio T uh, is this online website, and they have um, they have this one section where you can go on and you can make your own tea, fandom tea, essentially. And because it's the internet, there's a lot of nerd fandoms out there. A lot of there are a lot of um, there are a lot of Naruto teas, there are a lot of uh, Game of Thrones teas, Harry Potter teas, Doctor Who teas, you name it, it's on there. So I decided to be a little adventurous, and uh, right here beside me, um, I just brewed up some uh, hot water, and the, the tea leaves are actually steeping. Uh, right now I have Megatron and Starscream tea. And this is the so, Megatron tea. Um, is the tea it's the same in all the different ones. Like, is the Doctor Who tea the same as the Megatron tea? No, in taste? no, uh, no. Uh, there are different kinds of teas: uh, black teas, white teas, and green teas. So, uh, Megatron and Starscream are both black teas, and uh, it all depends on you know what you put in it, what you mix with it, everything else that makes it uh, sweet or bitter, you know, what have you. Um, Get Velocity on here and have her tell him about teas. <laughs> exactly. I could if I wanted to. Star this is tea is probably poisoned. Yeah. Well, this is Megatron's tea, if you can see it. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull out the the infuser here in just a second. Um, kind of doing this as a taste tester thingy. I've had these for like a week and a half, but I haven't actually seen them, or I haven't actually pulled them out yet. So this is Megatron. Looks like a large cannon. Is, yeah. This is actually, this is made with uh, gunpowder, black tea, lapsing, shaoshong, and then natural caramel flavor. Obviously not actual gunpowder. That is a type of black tea that is rolled into pellets that resemble uh, bullets. Okay, so, I was about to say black powder. Not maybe. actually gunpowder. Yeah, not actually gunpowder. But uh, this one is Megatron, so it's actually quite hot, and I'm not going to try it right now. 
Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have a live taste test. Live taste testing. It's awesome. Um, and then this one is, ouch, that was hot. Okay, this one is Starscream. And Starscream looks to be a little more caramely. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more. Oop. It's rosier. Little, little snow. Oh, come on. Hey, Internet. Figure yourself out. Huh? I would have expected it to be cheesier if it's Starscream. Cheesier, you jerk. <laughs> You're such a jerk. Okay, so then the Starscream tea. Yeah, I know. I accidentally spilled over my keyboard. I'm sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> well, you're still broadcasting. We can still see yeah. you. Hot tea on my keyboard. Yeah, I haven't like freaked out yet, so that's a good thing. Okay, then Starscream tea is made with. I'm trying to get to the to the what it's made with. Uh, made with black tea. This one's made with a whole bunch of different items, which is slightly bizarre, and I'm rather afraid of this one. Uh, <laughs> but this is made with black tea, Yunnan Jing tea. We ensemble tea. I'm sorry if I'm butchering these. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't figure these ones out. Ginger root, cardamom pods, natural caramel flavor, cocoa nibs, natural chocolate flavor, natural vanilla flavor, natural cinnamon flavor, and cinnamon bark. So this one is yeah, this one sounds really. This one is really detailed, and this one uh, is so. Then I don't know if you can see it clearly, but Megatron tea, which is a little lighter in color, and then Starscream tea, which is a little more caramely. So then uh, Megatron. Almost makes me wish I hadn't given up caffeine so I could try that. <laughs> Ooh, that's really good. Okay. Megatron tea. <laughs> this is the weirdest podcast ever, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> For okay, those Mega of you that are downloading this and listening, she just took a sip of tea. I know you couldn't see it. <laughs> Megatron tea is very smoky. It's because of the gunpowder. It's a very smoky, very dark, rich flavor. Um, this one is the Starch Cream Tea, which is uh, it is described as being sassy, stubborn, and leggy. The backstabber's cocktail. <laughs> That's what the Star Screams is. So here's Star Scream. This also contains arsenic. <laughs> Mm. And I can taste that one too. The starch cream is very um, um, caramely. I can really taste the caramel in that one. There is caramel still in Megatron's, but I couldn't quite taste it all that well. It's definitely smoky. Uh, and then Megatron's uh, uh, description is dark, smoky, and alluring, a product of the gladiator pits. It's a cool place, um, honestly. Uh, Adagio is has got some really neat teas just by themselves, like... Like you can just buy their tea bags, and then the um, the fandom section, like I said, is a bunch of different fandoms. You got to really be cautious though, as to what you're gonna try, because there are some people that make teas on here that don't know what they're doing, and the combinations that they've made look horrible. They probably taste horrible too. But Megatron and Starscream, I'm pleased with. Um, created by user Tara Kusterman. Uh, K-U-S-T-E-R-M-A-N-N, -N, which is a interesting last name um, on Adagio. Um, and I'm, I'm interested, and I like them. So that's good. Good on that lady. Did they have any other Transformer name flavors? They do, actually. Let me see. Let me, let me Transformer tag really quickly. They do actually have a bunch of different teas made by different people. It's not all made by this Terra lady. It's actually... Uh, they have uh, G1 Megatron, G1 Soundwave, the G1 Constructicons. Um, they have a T for. It's gonna be a dirty T because you know the construction. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's actually uh, from what I can tell just from the picture, uh, Constructicons are actually made with a heavy notes of bark, like wood bark. Green tea. Mm -hmm. awesome. No, not not a green tea. They're actually more oh. of a black tea. They need to be green uh, tea because they're is a, green. Soundwave is a green tea. No. Well, you can put green food color in it. <laughs> you could if you wanted to, yeah. Um, they have, uh, wow, what is that? I'm staring right at it. It's like my favorite Transformer series, and I don't know what it's called. I'm retarded. It's Prime? Animated? Nope. Nope. It's that one that was made in Japan. Please help me. <laughs> Armada? <laughs> Thank you, Armada. Armada Starscream. Uh, Armada Starscream is on here. Um, not sure what this one is, because it's just like a picture of a gun. So, <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's actually Red Alert. Uh, uh, that better be hot. But it's not yeah. spicy in a Red Alert tea. I don't know, because I mean, some I of them know. like some He's of them don't have a calm, you know, logical. Lupine. Which Red Alert we're talking about? Right? Oh, I'm thinking 
G1. Or, or, I was, I was no, on the Armada, Armada page. Armada, yeah, Armada. That's Armada Red Alert, yeah. I was like, uh, he's like the, the guy that's just like, oh, he's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's uh, what the hell is this guy? Armada Cyclonus. He's got a couple of T's on here. Or there's another Armada Red Alert. This Lupine created a lot of uh, uh, Armada themed T's. Then there's uh, Prime Optimus Prime, Megatron, Elita One, Prowl, Jazz, War for Cybertron, Jazz, uh, Animated Prowl, uh, Prime Soundwave. Uh, there's a, what is this, Swerve? More Than Meets the Eye Swerve. There's a More Than Meets the Eye Rewind. Uh, there's a Trax one on here. Uh, Wheeljack. So there's a, there's a bunch of T's on here. There's another Prowl one. I can't um, believe that the Starscream tea had all those ingredients in it, and all we got out of it was it was very caramely. <laughs> it was. It was like here. <laughs> it was, I think it's it was because I, and cinnamon and. I think it was because I had a lot of the. I saw the Megatron on my tongue, so mm -hmm. it was like the Starscream is hard to taste. But here's the Starscream again. Yes, because tasting it again will give us. Yes, <laughs> tasting it again. Um. Again, though, yeah, I can, I can definitely, I can taste the caramel. The caramel is the heaviest note in there. That's the one reason why. Is like there's so many ingredients in the Starscream tea that it's just like, I don't know if they're overpowering or if they're just too much for my, for my, for my palette. taste palate to flush out. I can certainly taste the caramel. The caramel is there. The chocolate, a little bit. It's like in a noisy room. You're only going to hear the loudest person. Exactly, and the and the caramel is definitely the loudest thing in there. And we all know Starscream has so many personalities, but the yeah. one is yeah, only one's coming exactly. out right now. The, the Megatron was so simple, and it was like, yep, immediately. I was like, there's the gunpowder. I can taste it. And it was just like with Starscream, just like, hmm, <laughs> what do I do with all these flavors? There's a yeah. There's a there are a bunch of teas on there. Like I said, I mean, there's one for like Doctor Who and 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 uh, the Avengers, and there's all kinds of different teas. You just got to be really Iron careful about. Yeah, there's Iron Man tea. Uh huh. You just got to be really Love careful about uh, about what you pick and and really kind of research. Like, Can like I mean, you don't like really hate them? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 fandom based. I mean, I've I've gone on here. I've uh, I need to research it a little bit more, but I actually want to make a tea for uh, G1 Hound and Tracks. Uh, just for the hell of it. And they're dirty um, tea and a very clean tea. Yeah, exactly, a dirty tea, a very say, dirty tea. Is there a way to make a uh, gay tea? <laughs> no, not really. Well, the yeah, there's, there's probably there is probably a way to make a gay tea. It would just be like fruity. There you go. Yeah, the okay, tracks tea has to be fruity. It would it would be very fruity. Well, I was actually um actually uh, tracks would have a lot of uh, chamomile like herbal tea because herbal tea is actually quite healthy for you. Um. You're but uh, I, I really like the, the Megatron tea. I'm gonna keep drinking it. Um, <laughs> Be Beachcomber's uh, the hippie. He was the one that would need the uh, the herbal tea. Yes, yeah. Beachcomber would be hippie tea all, all up the wazoo. But uh, yeah, there are. It's again, it's fandom run, so you can upload your own on there. But because you can upload your own, there are ones on there that are just absolutely horrible because people don't know how to mix teas or whatever like that. And I'm not a really big tea person. Like I'm not, or not 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 a big. I am a big tea person, but just not like a really big connoisseur yet. So I don't really know exactly what goes into what just yet. But yeah, that's my tea. Which is my only on-topic thing. Um, I also bought uh, crazy this crazy pop and cooking kit. And you see these stupid little things that uh, that that the Japanese make, um, and inside here are little packets of powder. And then Mini you mix ones, the powder. Right? Yeah, you mix the powder with water, and then. From there, you use the the packaging that it comes with, and you make molds out of it. You, you, there are molds and whatnot. This one is for donuts, because I thought, okay, donuts would be the most safest thing, because I'm kind of afraid of the one that makes hamburgers, a drink, and a friend French fries. <laughs> but there are ones out there like this. They make they they're hamburgers. Like I said, the hamburgers ones. There's uh, ones that make uh, gummy candy. There's one that make ice cream. The Japanese are make really weird things. Um, I bought it off Amazon for like ten bucks. So I mean, like I, I really want to buy a bunch of these, but I probably won't unless I'm like buying it for a special occasion. I'm actually saving this one for when uh, All Roads Home on Twitter, for when she comes down. Um, I'm actually working on. I'm saving it for her because I thought that'd be really cool, just a fun little thing for us to do for like twenty minutes or whatever. Um, 
I'm really eager to buy the other ones. I'd I, I would really love to buy the other ones, but I I can't because <laughs> they're really expensive. Um. Then the only other no wait, there's more. The other kind of on topic thing, or no, actually totally on topic, is uh, I bought uh, my TFCon registration. Yay! So I'm going to TFCon. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did my TFCon registration, and I bought my hotel tickets. So, or actually, I threw money at Axsmith, Aaron, um, on TFW. Um, I threw my money at him, and he is giving me a hotel room. So, giving me a place to crash. I'm so still up in the air on BotCon. I, I was looking at plane tickets the other yeah. day, and it's 500 bucks. Yeah, way, way expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, hey, you're flying into San Diego. You're flying into one of the central tourist trap hubs. So your tickets are going to be more expensive. Though you're, you're, It's going to be more expensive no matter what time you shop. And the longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're it's, the high four hundreds a month yeah, ago. Yeah, you're you're flying into San Diego. You're gonna have to expect that price, unfortunately. I'm probably not gonna make it to BotCon, but TFCon, on the other hand, I'm still gonna try to do that. I need to yeah. make arrangements with somebody to share a hotel room. Yeah, I've I, I'm glad I have the hotel room. I'm really looking forward to the road trip. That this is promising us. Uh, All roads home and I have been really wanting to do a road trip, like a good one. Like we did, uh, Natsume Rayo and Guard Convoy. Uh, All roads home and I did one out to Savannah last year. Um, we went out to Savannah, Georgia, and that was a lot of fun. We we did have a lot of fun with that. And now we're just looking for one to do with just All Roads Home and I because she and I have been dying to do a road trip for quite some time and 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 TFCon is providing that for us which is awesome. It's Sweet. going to be like a $600 and three day trip but hey that's that's and that's $600 if I'm bringing Breakdown. Um, if I didn't want to bring Breakdown it would be like a $400 plane ticket but at four hundred dollars to ship him round trip, I might as well just drive, because that's like buying him an entire plane ticket. Yeah. I might as well just put him on the plane. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm but still I mean, uh, big. I mean, I mean, big costume, giant box, lots of padding so that he doesn't get ruined, and then a uh, four hundred dollar um, insurance on him. So you know, with tracking, so it's he's kind of expensive. Um. The last ouch my wallet thing, I believe. Yeah, the last one that I have is come here. You're behind my TV. Okay, I'm doing uh, this helmet. Transformers Prime Skyquake. Um, Could it be Dreadwing? I'm, no, it can't be Dreadwing. I've already bought the fabric for it. That's my ouch my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make Dreadwing. Dreadwing is awesome, but Skyquake. Is he, he? I don't know why he appeals to me more, but he just does. He was only in the I one like episode. He well, was on. Oh, zombie. No, he wasn't in. He he wasn't in one episode. He was in ten minutes of a thirty-minute episode. That's not one episode. But anyway, I'm working on. Uh, I'm working on that. And uh, my last out to my wallet is I actually went out and bought his fabric today. Um, I was really pleased that it was as cheap as it was because I didn't want to spend the nine dollars and shipping on top of that that Spandex World charges for their Milliskin uh, fabric, the Milliskin Spandex. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm working on that. Uh, I was supposed to start on foam today, but I really wanted to show the the mock-up off on on uh, on the page, so or on this on this podcast if I can figure out my words correctly. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. I'm actually I'm, I'm looking to enter in because I suck listed to BotCon, it's not that big a deal. Um, I'm actually looking at entering uh, Skyquake, the helmet, into the BotCon and the TFCon art contests because I would really like it if the cosplay, especially at, at, at BotCon, I would really like it if cosplay was taken more seriously in the line of, in the line of art. Because it is, it is an art form. This is very much so an art form, um, and and I, well, that's one of the things that I really like to do is to is to get BotCon or at least encourage BotCon to look at cosplay as more of an art form. And that was why I would have entered Breakdown 
into the BotCon art contest. I was really kind of tempted to, but I really want to wear him for the weekend, so he can't be, like, sitting on on a mannequin the entire weekend. I would like to wear him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be, okay. be no fun for either of you. No, no, it wouldn't be. I mean, I I would absolutely adore to, you know, stand there and, and, and watch people gawk over him as he's sitting, as he's, as he's standing in the corner for, like, the art contest. But that's another one of the things that bothers me. And I don't think anybody's going to steal him because he's big and he's really hard to walk off with. But for all those people that say that they're afraid to enter things into the art contest because they get stolen, I mean, mm. I don't want that. I doubt that anybody's going to want to steal Breakdown, but... Um, yeah, and I doubt and if somebody ends up stealing Skyquake, that's going to suck, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the fabric was $14, and I already have his foam. So, okay, that's that's fine. But, uh, yeah, right. okay, that's that's my out of my wallet. Now I'm done. Okay. All right. Uh, Bulkhead Creo is awesome, guys. You, you built him that quickly? He oh looks, my I saw him. He was so cute looking. Uh, this is vehicle mode. He looks too much like a hound in uh, robot mode. Well, he's, um, well he was helmet. hound inspired. I mean, yeah, just the helmet. Bulkhead has the same like stars on him and everything. Same deco as hound. The the chest uh, tempo paint is a little different though, right? Yeah. All right. He's pretty awesome. All right. Well, we will go into our news. Our first story tonight. Uh, the Aaron Archer napkin sketch showed up. I think the new stories refer to it as his napkin revelation. Uh, this is interesting, I guess, because Aaron Archer is... I don't know if he's leaving Hasbro or leaving just the Transformer team. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, I, I know there's some kind of announcement about his involvement with Transformers going away. And I don't know if, I don't know if this is as a result of that. Maybe now he figures he can leak this kind of stuff since he's not going to be there. Um, but anyway, there's a napkin. Apparently he sketched some ideas on. Um, and this is the ideas that would have eventually became uh, the Transformers Cybertron series. Uh, everything that he had in the sketches didn't turn out to be, but you can see a lot of what did end up being there. Uh, any of you guys, uh, I guess you've all seen this, and you have any thoughts that jump out immediately? Other than the fact that I'm sad Aaron, Aaron's leaving, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, he's had a good he's had a good run. I mean, we got he, some good he, toys out of him. He has. There are a lot of a lot of people leaving the brand. I mean, most of the people that were there when I got in, I mean, they're gone. So, which which kind of bums me out. Um, I like the I, I love the, the the rough sketch doodles though. I really do. I like how the robots are just humanoid shapes. <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. You got that vector sigma transformer. It looks like those old uh those old computers you see in like sixties movies with the. Tape going oh, around on the real reels. Tape. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think what's really here the, the in this story or in this napkin is mostly just the story concept. Uh, it's not really much the design of the, the robots themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We see um, the homeland is in danger. They got to find a solution. And he's got like a little swirly, or there's just Unicron or black hole. I guess they haven't <laughs> had decided which thread it was going to be. Uh, <laughs> there's lost parts, so the Autobots go off. Uh, it looks like there's a bunch of doors and an Alpha Prime standing there. Uh, the Autobots go from that and they end up at the Beast Planet. And, the Decepticons uh, just skip all of that and go around. Yeah. <laughs> the Decepticons get to go around all of that nonsense. <laughs> well, I, I notice each one of the planets, though, has two of the same little... I call them doors. They look like a door with a door handle, but mm-hmm. it may not be you know, it's a square. A key, a, a key player at this point. It would yeah. be a key player in... Or a, a key player or a piece... Maybe the first image there, the Autobots go down and they find out. They meet Alpha Prime and find out about all these other key players, mm-hmm. uh, but not the identities. And then at each planet, they meet they a meet couple them. of them. Yeah. yeah so Beast I like planet, that. The which fast we, planet. We kind of had a beat. And what gets me is these planets, we kind of saw this thing in. This made it into the Cybertron series. You had the Beast planet. Uh, well, I think they call it the Speed planet, but here he's got a mm-hmm. Fast planet, a Giant planet, and then Earth. Uh, and then there's another circle there. But it's just he doesn't have anything written by it. Yeah, no name. It's just got a, a figure next to it, and then like a double, double circle. What does it mean? Don't what do you know. mean? It says We're return home sketch. with parts. Um, yeah, but between Earth and return oh yeah, home between parts, Earth and return home, there's another circle. 
Uh, who knows what I, I don't know. I uh, was probably Planet X. Yeah, it could be. It could be. He just didn't have a name for it, and he just, just at the end, they're like, we need a name for this now. Call it Planet Phoenix. X. <laughs> <laughs> the old Daffy Duck uh, cartoons where he was going through space, and they were searching for Planet X, and it just went through the planets A, B, C, D, E, D, all the way to the end. W, X after W. <laughs> right. <Before a> <laughs> um, and then you've got, um, you know, of course, Must Transform Primus, and then you have the old Transformers Core, and then Ancestors of the Core team. Uh, the second, I guess I don't know if this is the back of the napkin or another napkin, he just kind of has some bullet points. Autobots go and explore the planets uh, based on their similar talents. So I guess it would make sense if you take some Transformers to turn into Beast, some of the Beast Planet, sports cars for Fast Planet. Um, Cybertron looks. Cybertron look for all redecos. What do you think that meant? Background well, we characters. <laughs> I mean, we know that they've got to do something with you know decorating re redecos of the toys because they always have uh -huh. to try to get the most of them old. But I mean, that that sentence is just so incoherent. I mean, okay, it is. Figure out what to do with the redecos. What Cybertron look for all I don't, it doesn't make any sense. To me. I um, would imagine maybe they had just a color palette that, like for Cybertron, like it was like primarily this color, this color, this color, and they said, oh well, for the redecos, we're going to use those colors to harken back to Cybertron. I don't. Okay, That's the best yeah, I can like, like this, like a Cybertron look for yeah. all the redecos. Yeah. Hmm. All right, and I uh, had one group, uh, and then parentheses has drop off as part of the Matrix. I bet the Matrix was the, uh, what was it, the Cyber Key? Or not the Cyber Key, the, the Omega Lock. Or, is that what it's yeah, called? The, the Omega Lock. You unlocked Primus with? Maybe they were, that was going to be the Matrix at one point, because you had to kind of get one of each key before it could activate. Mm -hmm. um, so they're dropping off part of that. And then, of course, bad guys, question mark. I don't get that. Either. Of course, it's going to be bad guys. You can't have a Transformers series without bad guys. I mean, Ar Archer, you just drew the Decepticons hey, going around yes. all those doors on the other side of the map. <laughs> the rescue bots beg to differ. I was going to well, say, maybe the way this looks, I mean, the Decepticons aren't very big on this napkin. I mean, it's mostly all about finding out the information, oh, we have this issue, let's go through the entire series trying to solve that issue, and then the Decepticons just sort of, they go around stuff, and they just happen to meet you guys there. It's like, oh, we're going to get the way. Stop them. Either trying to yeah. stop them or beat them. Maybe that's what that question mark was, is what are the bad guys going to be doing? Yeah. Yeah, are, are they in this, going? are they going to be in this scene or not? I think was that, that was that one. Um, well, I think I think they were going to definitely be in the show. I don't think mm. they do a show without Decepticons. It just that's what, true. Are they going, what are they going to do in the show? Because um, I, I think Nazi was right. You look at the napkin, and it's just the basic premise of what the Autobots are trying to do. You see nothing in there about the Decepticon role. And what did the Decepticons do in Cybertron? They raced. They stood raced. around. I, I, I have no idea. I didn't, I didn't watch that much <laughs> of the show. They got in the way. <laughs> um, what did the bad guys do? Well, I know they a couple of them on speed. I only watched up through the speed planet stuff. I got tired of watching Hot Shot modify himself. <laughs> Yeah, episode, 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 Speed, episode, Speed episode, Planet episode. lasted so long that by the time it was over with, you didn't care anymore. Yeah, I, I stopped watching before Speed Planet was over. Isn't that ironic? Interest. Speed Planet slows the whole series down to the point that people don't care anymore. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm the race car fan. I, I'm a NASCAR fan, and I even I got bored with it. And I could watch cars go in circles for four hours. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't take any more Speed Planet. Uh, uh, but then we have... Um, Armor parts that could mean anything. Uh, did that? Well, that's the whole thing on the thing. Hey, let's go with all the parts, it, and then all the parts are going to be. Hey, it's all part of this armor over here. Matrix armor weapon. Yeah, yeah I don't know that <laughs> actually got flushed out. I don't think we ever found out what a matrix armor weapon was. What I so. want to know what didn't get flushed is these like alien drawings on here, and yeah. then the math, the it division. Looks, it looks like a uh, uh, a jet made out of triangles. <laughs> um, I can see that, yeah. And I think I think the the math was uh, Arthur trying to figure calculate the tip for his bill at the bottom. I was he just I was wondering that. I was like, there's thing. his tip right there. That's what <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking was his tip. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's got to be the tip. Or maybe him and a buddy. It was split multiplication a actually. Sixty times four, two forty. Sixty times three, one eighty. So he was doing multiplication for some reason. We're like trying to pick apart Aaron's brain from the outside. <laughs> this napkin, what does it mean? 
That Who's holds all the secrets. <laughs> What's going on? All right. Anybody Bye. have any other nitpicks about the napkin? It's a beautiful napkin. It is a beautiful napkin. The, the, oh, the interesting thing about this. Random apocalypse on the side. Well, well, this is just a napkin. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's a neat piece of Transformers history because I mean this was he was the head guy at Hasbro over Transformers at the time he came up with the concept for the show and the direction it's going to go so if, you know, we can hear and joke and laugh at all we want to this is something that whoever if if this thing ever gets into anybody else's hands it needs to be framed just because it's a piece of Transformer history is he selling it on eBay <laughs> I must, must go bid must go bid oh God. Oh, that would be crazy. I, I, I love it. I mean, this is 2005, 2006. So, for oh, for a napkin to survive yellowing. that long. Yeah, it is yellowing, but for a napkin, <laughs> of all things. Hmm. Like, I can I see a piece of... I can have, like, some napkin pictures, and also, like, paper bag pictures in my, like, art binder or whatever, just from, like, when you just randomly draw stuff. You're like, you know what, I'm, like, I'm going to keep that in case I need to, you know, take that pick that apart. So he was right. he was wise enough. He had the wisdom to keep this piece of well, parchment. I, I'm looking at this. His Cybertron up there, which is Homeworld in Danger, Find a Solution. He has a Cyclops smiley face drawn in the middle of it. It's got one mm. eye and then like a little, little cheeky smile. Let me look at this again. And then it says lost parts. It's all sliced up, but you know, you ignore the the sliced out parts to the, on the left side. It's it's oh, a yeah. one eyeball in the middle and then a smiley. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a cy- smiley face. It's a I... cyclops smiley face. It's a cyclops planet, apparently. Okay, so apparently Primus was supposed to be a cyclops. Yeah, I was wondering what what the whole lines on the Cybertron was all about. I, think I thought maybe he pieces. was looking in that direction, you know. Oh, I thought those were the slices because like lost parts. I figured it was like slices gone out like a pie. That makes more sense to me. But it's, they drew it over top of the Cyclops smiley face. And the eye is pointing in that <laughs> direction. So maybe maybe there's multiple layers to this that we just haven't uncovered yet. The, the brilliant God. Mary Why Archer is so deep. This is so deep. <laughs> oh, so God, deep. we're picking up on a napkin for the love of Christ. Yeah, Cyclops Cybertron is looking at must transform Primus. <laughs> He's looking at himself? <laughs> yeah, it must be. I don't know. That's why he's smiley. Man, that's, good. that's what he's <laughs> that's what he's transforming into, I guess. Well, well speaking and this of is how the planet splits apart. I don't even know. I guess maybe maybe they weren't sure at the time if he was going to be like sentient, and so he drew the circle and he was like, "All right, this is going to be a sentient planet, so we're going to put an eyeball and a smiley face to show that it has emotions or feelings." And then he drew the pie slices in it. just happened to look like he was looking over there. And he's like, dude. It's a and then we have to show planet. that he's actually going to transform. And it's going to be like, he's looking at it. And it's like, dude, this guy turns into this guy. <laughs> totally. It's just like that's, Aaron, that's what are you doing? That's how it went doing? down. I'm just doing it now. <laughs> okay, that's exactly how it went down. <laughs> well, oh, speaking God. of robots who think they look good, uh, Natsume, would you like to tell us about the new generation Sandstorm pictures? Oh, now? my gosh. We knew it was going to happen. I think everybody knew it was going to happen, but we didn't know how good it was going to be. I just expected it, a new head. I, I didn't expect all this remolding. Yes. It is completely... I mean, it might as well, to me, it might as well be a brand new, different figure, and I will gladly buy both Springer and Sandstorm and put them next to each other, and they won't even look like, dude, that's the, that's the same mold or whatever, like part of the same mold. Because it's just so amazing. Let me get back to that page so I can look at the gawk in the pictures some more. So obviously he's got the new paint scheme, um, and he has no propellers now. He still has the hole, I think, in the top for the propellers. Yeah. But they they might have like made it. It's more like repurposed into like a gun holster or whatever. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's two different stories because they didn't. All the pictures didn't come out at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you go if you go to just the the TF source one, it has all three pictures. It's okay. all three modes. These pictures. Um, where, where did these leak? I think it was the somebody's Facebook page, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Was the the official Transformers Facebook page? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to find some pictures of Springer to do a side by side comparison on my. Yeah, I want to do that too. If you find that, post me. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking about this. So it's amazing, because um, I do want to see how some of the kibble differs. For the most part, um, 
Well, the, he's not a helicopter anymore, obviously. He's more like one of those flying ships from Avatar where he's got the propellers on either side of the vehicle. Beetle. Yeah. And it's still got the underslung gun on the front. I think that's all the same. I think the rest of the body is pretty much the same. And in the car mode, um, it still has the distinguished panels that make the car look good. Like the side is a different color from the front fender, which is a different color from the roof and the hood of the car. And it, it just makes it look so good, so sweet. It's got those huge tires in the back. It's like, that's totally a dune buggy. It's amazing. And it's like, you wouldn't expect it to turn into a flying thing. It's, it's beyond compare. It is like, I'm just, I'm just gushing. I don't have words for how... Perfect. I, I, these two molds are. I, I like the fact that they did some extensive remolding to make them look more different than just a head. Yes. So I knew the alt modes would work both ways. I think when we first talked about Springer on the podcast, if we did way back before our long hiatus, we talked about the possibility of this thing being repainted into Sandstorm. I yeah. just don't think I like the idea of VTOLs. I mean, because to me, you know, Sandstorm being a helicopter was as important as Springer being a helicopter. I mean, it's neat, but I'd like to find a way to just stick some blades back on the roof. Really? I don't know. It, I think it's. That's I think it's a clever way of uh, not having so much of the same. I mean, we the helicopters are played out. Yeah, I think there's, it's, I think there's enough of them. <laughs> and besides that, I just think that the fact that it's one of the things that makes it different from Springer, and I like that. It's one of the things mm -hmm. that differentiates him. I, I think, if anything, I would have rather have seen Springer become the VTOL. I think it would have suited him better. But then what would... I mean, because it's like everybody, everybody like recognizes but, Springer as like a helicopter. That's it's, but That's and Springer's signature is his rotors become his blades. His sword, and yeah, you take yeah. that away, it's not Springer That's anymore. True. And Springer is a little more in the limelight now with the last down of the records and stuff. So he's, yeah. It's a little more important that they keep him the helicopter, I guess. That's just my preference. But I think, I, I'm like you guys, it looks fantastic that they were able to change this thing so much. I'm, it, I'm blown away. Mm -hmm. I fear that the yellow plastic is going to look cheap by the time we get real non-photoshopped images. Um, as well, like some of the newer images we've seen of uh, the IDW Spotlight Bumblebee. You know, it's that yeah, it's that yellow plastic that Hasbro loves to use that looks dull and you know is really easy to see through. Well, I don't know. I mean, animated Springer bumblebee. Has yellow. <laughs> Springer has yellow. yellow. His isn't like that. I mean, people have him in hand. And has it been reported that he's got that cheap plastic? Um, I think on the very front of the helicopter or of the car. The plastic is kind of thin, and you can see through it. Okay, um, that's the shoulders. Yeah, I've heard the shoulders yeah. are a little thin, but and I'm not sure about it. I've heard, I've heard that's the only part, though. Uh, it's just I don't know. Hasbro does yellow poorly a lot of times, so I'm kind of skeptical. But we'll see. Yeah, now that you mentioned it, I remember even my uh, Universe Sunstreaker seemed like he had some pretty thin yellow. Or at least, even if it wasn't that thin, it just it didn't it had a cheap looking, cheap look to it. And I but I got yeah. the uh, the Henke version, and it seemed like it just felt more quality. Uh, so I guess it's pretty safe to say the three people we've heard from want to buy this toy. Amber's being awfully quiet, and she's still being quiet. Does she not hear us? Does she not? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. I'm retarded. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. How are you? Oh, we're recording tonight? Well, somebody should have told I, I know. I'm sorry. Were we talking about Skywarp? <laughs> no, not yet. We were talking about Sam. Oh, okay. You're the only person who had in time then. We just didn't know what you thought. Uh, he's cool. I'm not allowed into him, but, you know, so I don't really have much... Yeah, so I, I don't care. Uh, my my toy collection is already so freaking big. If I start offering up my opinions on things, that it's going to be, oh my god, I need to buy these. So. Like, <laughs> oh my god, it sucks because it's not Skywarp. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't suck because it's not Skywarp. It's just it's not. I. Eh. I bet if they <laughs> I bet if they painted that toy purple and black, you'd buy it. <laughs> Uh, maybe I have a I have a sky Skyfire that's black and purple. 
Look at these kind of like Skywarp colors. There you go. Yeah, because he was Skywarp colors. I was like, oh, that's really pretty. I'm going to buy him. And then I found out it's not actually a Skywarp toy. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Or Actually, no, I knew it wasn't a Skywarp sword to start with, but I was just like, Skyfire in black and purple. He looks really cool. I'm going to buy him. And then well, it was he's... like later I figured out that he was like, I think the Shattered Glass or Alternate Universe. I don't know. It was an Alternate Universe, something or other of, of uh, Skyfire. And I was like, wow, it's kind of interesting. He's 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 halfway Skywarp. Halfway. He's Skyfire. Skyfire. Yes, yeah, he's got the so sky. it kind of works. He's got sky. the sky. He's black and purple. You just could change the fire to warp. <laughs> Exactly. Um, no, I, I, I don't have much to say about Sandstorm. I mean, he's not, not necessarily something I'm into. That's all. Okay. Not gonna knock him. He's just not something I'm into. Well, I have I bought the see. Blitzwing and Springer from BBTS. They're in my pile of loot that has been shipped, but it has not arrived yet. Um, this guy, I don't know if I'm gonna try to. I'm probably gonna wait till I find him on shelves. I don't think he's gonna fly off as quick as Springer and Blitzwing did. Um, so I'm going to take my chances to find him in stores. But I'm definitely going to pick him up. He does look cool. Alright, uh, speaking of something else that looks cool, we have new images of the Beast Hunters Abominus Target Exclusive gift set. Uh, not oh, so maybe would you like gonna... to tell us about this release? We're just going to do all mine at once, aren't we? Oh, Get this the other. Out, yeah, well you chose the two that are right next to each other on the list. Oh, it's not <laughs> my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so this is this is the guy that we were hinted about way back when when we found out, hey, these guys combine. There's also going to be a gift set, and it's going to be recolored. Um, so now we finally have images of this, and it's got clear plastic in it, which I'm always a sucker for. But overall, I probably won't be going for it. Um, he's got too many colors, in my opinion. Um, I think each of the figures has yellow in it, which is something that, except for the core. Um, but... Has yellow in it, so that pretty much draws it all together. But the core one has yellow paint. Yeah. Arm. Well, the hunger, the one in the middle, he looks the same as the retail release to me. And the others look the same colors as the retail release, except they have clear plastic. Well, he's got clear plastic too. The shades are off a little bit. The like the center. Oh, on his there. chest, yeah, that's clear he's, plastic. All his black. red is all clear. Red. It's just sort of foggy. Yeah. Okay. Had to get closer to the camera. It's not as clear. Well, I mean, even blot his the purple isn't. Yeah. Super it's clear. Cloudy. It's kind of cloudy. Like yeah. Crystally. Well, it's usually the way the colored clear plastic looks. I mean, if you look at the Energon, yeah. the, the BBTS exclusives of the Transformers Prime toys with the dark Energon, like Starscream, he looks like a he looks like Skywarp because he's not completely clear. I just come to the vibe I'm getting from these guys, the clear plastic where it's colored, it doesn't it's not completely see through. Yeah. But they look really good backlit though. Like the plastic kinda of glow. Yeah, so actually I'm not as fond of these guys as I was hoping for. I was like, Oh, it's gonna be recolored, it's gonna look so good together, like com as a combiner, since it's a gift set that combines that has all of them in the same set. You thought like, it oh, you know. look amazing. It does look okay together because his arms are like they're both that sort of icy blue. And then his legs, his legs don't really have anything in common except it's a shade of blue. But his arms have the icy blue and then the yellow, the yellow clear plastic. So that sort of looks good. Um, but I was hoping, the clear plastic is really the only thing I really like about it. See, that's the thing I don't like about it. I just, I just wanted this set in as close to G1 colors as possible. And it looks like I'll have to just go retail release on all of them. I only have one. I've yet to find Hunger. He was in Wave 2. I've yet to see those anywhere. Yeah. And then the other three remaining ones will come in a wave, all the same wave, and I haven't even seen the Hunger wave. I've, so, I've only seen Twin Strike, that's it. Yeah, same here. I've got him, and that's the only one I have. Um, I noticed the packaging looks different than our other uh, Beast Hunters packaging as well. It's blue. Yes, that's right. I saw that. Um, and it he has, has character art. It looks pretty neat. He has character art. It does look, and it's different than the actual color on the toys. Yeah, a lot more red on Hunger. Well, I think it's I think he's red in the same places. They just proportionally they've made the red parts larger. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it's like, his, like you know, the tail of the dragon or whatever yeah. on his chest. And since it's more of a gray instead of a pinkish, his his grayish pl plastic, it's mm -hmm. more like a gray. It's, and it's all shaded, so it doesn't look all like, hey, I'm the the not red part. <laughs> um, and his right look, arm is look green at me. I'm instead not red. of blue. <laughs> 
That's going to be the new meme for a while. The new Transformer that doesn't have red on it. Look at me, I'm not red. So yeah, it's got the um, Transformers, and then it's got uh, what's his face up at the top? Freddy King. King. And then in French and English, only at exclusive, exclusivité Target, and then at the bottom, Beast Hunters, Predacon's Rising. Like, it's a subline of a subline. And then Predacon, It Alpamanos. could be like the All-Spark... Oh, uh, All-Spark powered? Powered line that... Uh, that would Target explain had. the bla- the the clear... I mean, not the clear... The electric blue plastic on these guys. Yeah, and the... Uh, Yo, dog, we heard you like sublines, so we put a subline in your sublines. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Maybe, I guess maybe just the clear plastic, maybe? Like, yeah, it could oh, be like it's rising, clear plastic powered lighting. up, and they have clear plastic. It totally made a difference. So they're powered uh, over 9,000? Yes! I can't say I... I mean, if I was going to get it, I would get the gift set, but combining Legends... It sounds fragile enough as it is. I mean, I have the Legends Devastator, and one of them already has a stress crack in it. Oh. Um, and so I don't think clear figures that combine are going to hold up very long, especially, you know, down there at, like, Hunger's Dragon Heads and stuff like that. I don't know. Well, how do they, um, how do they attach... Well, I know the twin strike I have. I'm, look, I'm looking here at the picture that has all five. You can see the two little pegs and his lower yeah, legs. Yeah, they peg and into on, his arms. Yeah, you, you look at Hunger's arms, you two little holes. Right That's what I elbow. figured. I was like, oh, it looks like they just sort of like like weapon pegs. Like I imagine on the yeah. bottom of like his dragon jaws, he's probably just got like a hole for a weapon peg or whatever. Well, actually, I think that clips in a different way. So actually, the legs might be better. It Up at the top might be where the problem is, where you have clear plastic clipping into... Mm-hmm. Or pegging into clear plastic, you get, you know, stress, stress cracks and stuff like that. That stuff doesn't like to stretch like normal plastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more brittle. That's why. That, I, I mean, it looks really cool, but it's super brittle. I just don't like the idea of clear plastic. E- even with like you know cars and things, I'd rather they just paint the windows than to use clear plastic and then try to paint the other parts to match the rest of the car. Because number one, the paint never matches the plastic so it's off and number two it's more brittle yeah. all the time I'm always worried that it's going to break and then it leaves easter eggs for all of the people who kitbash these things for people to find like in Crank Case's case he had black plastic windows someone took off his backpack and he has seats inside which makes no sense when you have black plastic windows well, I think originally, I think in the production or the the whatever photos, or like even on the back of the packet, yeah, in the back of the packaging, he's got like a clear purple. So it's like the purple windshield. So I guess just they changed it. Yeah, they're like, oh, let's just make him all black. Nobody's gonna care for this character anyway. He's a Michael Bay movie. He's gonna be beheaded in the only scene. Poor guy. I still, we'll I, we'll I, I still want to make a costume of one of them. It's on my list of characters to do. Things to do. Because, I mean, and it was ever since the whole finger incident. The finger I, I incident? I looked, yeah, with the middle finger being all long and then they clipped it. Oh, okay. I, yeah. looked, uh, I looked for an unclipped one. I, I just got a remolded one and I wasn't going to buy one of the clipped numbers, so. That's all I ever had in my area were the clipped ones. I never, yeah. never I, I checked the product numbers. I never found one unclipped and I never found any remolds. I mean, from the beginning of the line to the end, every store around here, that I, I checked every store on a regular basis. It was all the clip versions. I found uh, maybe close to like f- 10 to 15 remolded, I think, throughout the entire course of the line. And then there would have been like maybe 75 clipped. And then there was really no rotation in my area for those at that time. It was pretty much the ones that they put out at the beginning wow. were there until the end. Yeah. They, they were such shell formers. Ooh. Can I say I really like the packaging? Yes. Yes, you can say. No, you're not allowed to say that. That box art is cool. Yeah, I love uh, the This box. is exciting me. Box it's art a, I, always excites me, and and to see to see box art on the shelves at this time at this day and age, that's like one of my favorite yeah, things. Yeah, I, I and miss This box is really art. pretty. I know. This is gorgeous. The thing not, about not the a, box art. I, 
I'm not at all a fan of the uh, uh, of the unified beast, pack, yeah. renders and things. Well, I'm just I'm not a fan of the beast stuff, like at all. But this is really pretty. I will probably end up picking this up at the store and then just staring at it for a few minutes and then putting it back. What <laughs> makes me sad about looking at that box art hmm. is to think that the toy could have looked a little more like that had this yeah. been a five deluxe class combiner like Bruticus. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Well, Instead but this is this is you know. Being sold as a complete set, you know, on the shelves as opposed to, I mean, Bruticus, yeah, they could have easily gone the Bruticus route where they sold all the toys them individually. The well, when they sold them all individually. Yeah. Like, like, they could have done that with this one, but they've already done that, so they're trying mm -hmm. something different. Well, but even as this is, if they would have just made Hunger a Cyberverse Commander instead of a Legion. I know, that, that probably would have been better to a little bit bigger. They could have worked a few more joints into it to make it a little more poseable. Mm -hmm. Give them a little more knee, better knees and hips for the combined mode. But oh well. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Hey. Uh, compared <laughs> to the EZ collections, you know, Devastator, uh, this one's kind of lazy, in my opinion. I really like that Devastator. Yeah, yeah I agree, because that Devastator was awesome. The way they worked, you know, three modes into each toy, and they actually pull off their modes really well, and they it looks like Devastator is supposed to look when it gets combined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's that's one of the. I mean, I I stared at that toy for for hours. Must have been um, once I got him home from Comic Con. Like I I took that sucker out of the package and I started build. I started transforming them every which way and direction. Granted, I accidentally broke Sky no Swindle on accident. I broke Swindle the first day I had him. So it was just like I broke one of the pegs off. Like that that holds his his uh, roof down. Oh, you're down. talking about the uh, the Bruticus. I think I think yeah. Michael was talking about the uh, the little, little legends devastator from. Oh, I'm retarded. Part. I'm sorry. No, I am okay. not listening tonight. We, apparently, we, we, floated from, <laughs> we floated from one to the other. I, yeah, I don't know where the hell you went. You're just like, all right, we're gonna go this way now. We're like, I'm just like, I'm freaking lost now. See, see. Well, <laughs> hey, hey, I was on the same I was on the same vein. I was talking about. Combiners, so whatever. Well, we were talking about Bruticus <laughs> earlier, so you okay. know, like, like 30 seconds earlier. Okay, okay, so I'm not completely <laughs> off base. <laughs> okay. He was talking about the little Legends Devastator, and then you said, yeah, I got that set, and I just stared at it forever, so I love the swindle, and I'm like, there was a swindle, I, and that's it. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm... It's okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> I'd say I'm uh, tired, but that's a lie, because black tea has a ton of caffeine in it, so... <laughs> And I just finished uh, Megatron. <laughs> you know that I've been that way before, being extremely tired, but then wired up on caffeine, and you still, it's like you have energy, but you still feel tired. Yeah, it's, it's the most surreal feeling. You're, I've been you're there. not gonna fall asleep, but you're as tired as I'll get out. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, speaking of little figures, uh, we want to hear a story about some little figures done correctly. Uh, Michael, tell us about the Generations Legends Megatron and Starscream that were revealed. All right. So. These are new figures in the new Generations Legend line that um, are the Decepticon companions to, or counterparts to the uh, current IDW uh, Optimus with Roller and Bumblebee with, uh, what's the name of his jet? Is it, is or it Jolt? His helicopter? I don't think it's Jolt. Well, what's it's, the uh, name? I think it's the same as the one that uh, Armada Hotshot came with it. No, he's not called Jolt. Uh, what is remember. the name of that? Yeah, well, we're just gonna call him Jolt. Anyway. Those guys, yeah, we'll call him. We'll call him Blue Jolt. Not Jolt. Jolt. Jolt two point oh. Not Jolt. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this is a IDW. Uh, what is this? Origins Megatron. Uh, he's got the tank. Yay! Got the, yeah. The. The origins <laughs> motif my going Megatron. on, and uh, he comes with a little Chop Shop figure, which looks a lot like G1 Chop Shop. Um, turns into a, it looks like he turns into an ant crawling on Megatron's arm. He doesn't appear to really transform into a weapon, aside from flipping out a peg. Blaze Master. Um, yeah, Blaze Master. That's him. Yeah, just googled it. Um, and so. Yeah, that's all well and good. Megatron and Chop Shop are... Chop Shop's not an ant, though. He's a beetle. Is he? He's, yeah, yeah, he's a beetle. He's and got a beetle the big... with the big pinchers. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's something. He's kind of like the same he, kind of thing. He does he's look a, like he's crawling he, on Megatron by himself. Right? Yeah. So he's a he's a beetle then. But uh, the real star here in my book is Starscream and Waspinator, which to me is uh, I don't I don't give Hasbro enough credit for being that clever. Um, <laughs> because you know anyone who's seen Beast Wars knows the episode Possession where Starscream possesses Waspinator's body and you know it's one of those icons of the first uh, Beast Wars season and so this this so now Starscream set still is, possesses Waspinator just in a different way. Yeah, he now he uses him as a as a bug cannon. And uh Which I don't know, that is awesome. Yeah, that that said just you know, it hits every everything that's right um that I would want from something like this. And the little waspinator is you know, he, he suffers from Shoot being tiny, but he I love that little thing. I uh that's what she I can't wait to get like I can't wait to get this one of the set. Bug. Yeah, I'll be getting I'll be getting all four of these figures now, just so well, that Starscream and Waspinator has. Weren't the Beast Wars characters already like smaller? Like there was like the, the great upgrade where they all downgraded. Yeah, the they all got so, smaller. So Waspinator should be smaller than Starscream. Yeah. yeah. All right, now I mean, this needs to be a thing. Do they needs come to make all of them as weapons, so that they're all in scale and everything? Oh, oh they do come oh. together. Okay. Yeah, well, here's what I don't get. I'm wondering if these Target Master partners, uh, like Roller and Chop Chop and Waspinator and Blaze Master, I wonder if they're tied to on the tooling, the the, the main mold. Like, can they mix them up mm. for repaints? Yeah. Because because we're gonna say if they give us Skywarp and Thundercracker from that Star Screen, are they gonna come with repaints of Waspinator, or can they use some other bugs and repaint them? Like, give us Chop Chop repainted as Shrapnel for one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, they, it always could be that they would have to, you know, recolor the two figures and then just swap their partners. That's what I was going to um, say. But then, I mean, who would you ever swap out Waspinator with? That's the well, he could be sure. Buzzsaw. Uh, yeah, he would be Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw. But who would you give it to? I, would, I mean, Skywarp with Buzzsaw would be awesome. I would just keep it like that. <laughs> and then give Thundercracker the Chop Chop repaint as shrapnel. I really want to see that as shrapnel. In black and purple. That would be good with shrapnel. You know what? I might, like, I'm so not so not a toy customizer. I've been really wanting to learn how, though. Like, I've got a couple of toys here that I want to do things with. And I I know I need that Origins Megatron, but I don't want that Chop Chop. So I think that would be kind of cool as a project. I'll, I'll buy the Chop Chop from you. I'll paint okay. it black. Okay, because I really I don't I don't want the I know I need the Origins Megatron toy. He is my favorite Megatron, but I do not want the Chop Shop. So either I well, I'll probably just sell it to you, or I will yeah I'll buy it. I will end up trying to figure out how customizing works. <laughs> I know it's not that hard. It's just the skill I haven't figured out yet. I haven't even tried. Yeah, if, you can build, kinda... if you can build costumes, you it's could... like sewing. No, we but... just don't do it. Well, yeah, that, well. It's... <laughs> This, the, the no brainer. Co breakdown is is a no brainer. That's that's not like robot building is really 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 easy, and people don't get that when I say how easy it is. But it's really easy, and well, I don't get customizers they, because they've never oh. done it. And it's yeah. kind of like customizing. It's easy if you know if you've done it. And you know yeah, how. it's it's easy if you know how. But if you don't, you're just like oh dot dot dot. It's just like with everything oh, wow, else. That's amazing. Like, how did you do that? Oh, uh, well, I did it like this and this and this. like people uh sorry tangent um people don't get it like when i when I say that that breakdown or any costume that I'm working on creating is literally five percent measurements and then ninety five percent of screaming at cardstock because it's not doing what I want. It's a lot of guesswork, and people don't get that. But and no, I'm saying that, uh, that ninety percent of her guesswork, I don't understand. I yeah, don't and you don't understand do that because you, yeah. <laughs> but see, you use a Peppa Cora program, which is like 
I do. This I make everything is doing like it all for me. And like, perfect. No, I have, to make, I have to do all that stuff, but I have to do it all in 3D, and then there's no guesswork for me because I know what I'm doing. And I'm yeah, like, because the, compro the program does it for you. No, it doesn't. I have to do all of that. <laughs> this is freaking guesswork, man. But that's the thing is you just do it in 3D, and then it's like, you know, okay, I'm going to do this one. This is this, this, this. It's easy. And it's like... I'm doing it the, I gotta figure this out in cardstock before I do anything else. Yeah, the issue I had before I did stuff in 3D beforehand was just, I was always so worried about proportions. Uh-huh. And that was something I, I mean, because I did, I did sort of mock-ups for Blackout, and he turned out okay, but it's, it's not something I want to do again. I, I, I definitely like the mock-ups. Again, I can't I can't work with Hepakura. Like, I know how it works, and I've messed with it before because of the Halo stuff, but I haven't actually played with it, like, much. And that's probably the same thing with customizing, is I just have to sit down and do it. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm an incredibly crafty person, so, like, sitting down and actually figuring out customizing would be fun, and maybe I'll do that with Chop Shop. I still really want to do it with, no, with the Thundercracker mold. No, you have to, sell it to me, because... I need two chop shops. <laughs> one to keep his chop shop, one to make a shrapnel, and I don't want but to I'll, make but I'll, but I'll just make it a shrapnel and then sell it to you for a markup. But I, <laughs> I want to do it myself. <laughs> but you can repaint the Megatron green. I was going to say G2 Megatron. Or something. Make him G2 Megatron. Aww. Oh, there we go. Mm, no. I like the tank. Okay, probably or you can do he's, got us, even. he's got to stay as Origins Megatron. I mean, he won't have the chest thing, but you could, you could probably fix that. Oh, I still really want to make a Rainbow Dash figure out of my Thundercracker Generations what? toy. I have a I have a Thundercracker Generations toy that my friend was just like, "Here, you can have this." I'm like, oh, "Okay, it's still in the box, but like I've I've been really my wanting Rainbow to strip Dash. because it's a jet and she's a, a flying pony and it's blue. And she's blue. Yes, but I but I I'm really kind of tempted to strip down the paint on Thundercracker and really figure out how this works, and then just make like this cyan jet, and then and then put Rainbow Dash's symbols on on his wings, and then be like, look, it's Rainbow I Dash. I'll leave it. I'll leave it blue. You should um, no, because it doesn't because it doesn't need to be that dark. But that that's too dark. That dark blue is too uh, dark. It needs to be a cyan, a lighter blue. Look at look at Breakdown's shoulder. Compare it to Breakdown's chest. <laughs> Yeah, and there's the difference. Rainbow but Dash is up there, you sitting on Breakdown's shoulder. Um, the Thunderbirds, how they have the stripes on the tips of the wings and on the mm -hmm. the top of the aileron, and mm -hmm. you should put rainbow stripes up there, like her, her tail. I mean, yeah, well, like I've got the Thundercracker toy already, so I think I'm just gonna stick with that one because I mean, it's, it's a Generation Thundercracker, and he's already got stripes, so you know, okay. I I figure that. I mean, that, that is a good idea, but I figure, hey, you know what, I've already got this toy, so I might as well use it. I'm not going to keep it as Thundercracker, because I don't care for the toy itself. I don't care for the character himself, really, at all. You so, have that you know, the Skywarp, though, right? Do I? No, I don't. Your Skywarp collection is not good. To get the Skywarp, you have no, to buy the, the, the Skywarp Ultra Generations, Magnus, Generations didn't come out with a Skywarp by himself. Yeah, I would have had to buy that ridiculously stupid, expensive Skywarp, and I'm I'm working on trying to find that, but I don't want Ultra Magnus, so I'm trying to find yeah. him loose. And it's it's all it's overpriced because it's the it City Commander set. I saw him. I freaking saw that set in stores, and I went eh, and I passed it off because I didn't want to buy it and then have and then have this Ultra Magnus. I didn't want to. If you had done that though, you could have sold the Ultra Magnus. <laughs> For a I of could players. have, but at that point, at that point, the the city commander set wasn't out, so it wasn't it, like in was crazy so high demand. I remember when that set came out, everybody was complaining that they put Skywarp in there with the, stu the stupid <laughs> white primary paint. Nobody wanted. So I know. Were buying it for Skywarp, selling Magnus dirt cheap, and then all of a sudden, here comes city commander, and everybody was like, "Don't!" Oh! I know, and it was like it was like that because of that city commander set was the reason why it went up, and like I saw it in stores, and I completely passed it by. I was on like, clearance yeah, I, for like twelve bucks. Yes, and it's like I I really don't need that. I don't want the Ultra Magnus. I just want Skywarp. So I'm gonna try and find it loose later. And now, like, what happened? Now I'm tr I'm I'm trying very hard to find it, and I am not having any luck. <laughs> like I'm, I'm I managed to find one person a couple years ago that had. Uh, that, that claimed he had City Commander Skywarp, but he was missing a couple parts. And I actually took a look at it, and it was not even the same toy. And I'm like, nope! <laughs> For 60 bucks, nope, I'm going to walk away. <laughs> yeah, that's a little high. 
Yeah. You can just well, get a, uh, well, that's well, that's a little off. high, and it wasn't even from that Skywarp was not even from the City Commander set. I already had that Skywarp toy in my collection. Yeah, I was kind of annoyed that Hasbro didn't bring out a new Skywarp in the uh, second in the Generations line because I would have really if he came out separately in the Generations line, because then I'd have him, and well, I wouldn't have to worry about it. We got three Seekers in that line. They gave us the Thundercracker... Well, they gave us the ones from the BotCon set, which were even more expensive and rarer than the, yeah. the right. Skywarp. I think three, three, of the same old, three of the same old in line was probably pushing it. Yeah, and I, like, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can... Like, I'm honestly still really looking to see if I can find that, that particular Skywarp loose, because, I mean, people want it for the City Commander, so I'm hoping... <laughs> Now I can people, find someone that doesn't want it. You'd think with all the other releases of Skywarp we've had since then, that I think uh, Takar has put out a couple. There was oh, yeah. The, 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 yeah. the Hen K one, and then there was that three pack with all of us. Do you think it's uh, Do you think it's Masterpiece Skywarp's fault that we don't get Skywarps anymore from Hasbro? Because mm. he shelf warm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I I, I want. The new mold masterpiece. I got the Thundercracker. I need the Skywarp, and I wanted to reissue Starscream because he's ridiculously expensive now. The oh masterpiece line. Yeah, the new the new one that they made where they tweaked the mold and gave him the cape oh, crown. Man. I yeah, it was. Wait, I thought it was expensive oh, when okay. it came out. I have I, the only the only one I've got. Okay, yeah, okay. The only one I've got is the. Was that a Target? Is the Target or Walmart, Walmart. exclusive? Walmart. Okay, thank you. A Walmart that, exclusive. That was the first mold, and they they redid yeah. the mold and got rid of the yeah. and stuff. I, I have that one. I still need to get the Takara masterpiece Skywarp toy, and I'm trying to find one that will that will possibly go below 100, but I usually see them for like 120. Um, and then the um, yeah, I think that'd be really cool if they come out with one in the in the newer mold. I'm really looking forward to. I I need to get my hands on so many Skywarp toys. It's not even funny. I mean, I've got a lot of them already, so I mean, I'm only I'm missing. Like probably ten from my collection, but I, I managed to find a deal on a world's smallest Transformers Skywarp last year at Bacon. Did you get a real one, or did you get one of the uh, the remakes from the Heroes toys? You were aware that there's like a knockoff of that, right? I think we just right. lost her. Oh wait, no, I she's, really... she's moving now. Yeah, I am. I am. I haven't. I'm I'm here. I'm sorry. My my yeah. computer decided to spaz. Um, yeah, there is a knockout for it. A knock off. You, 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 you got I a real one? I haven't bothered to research it yet. If it is the knockoff, oh well. Um, uh, I will deal with it and live with it because hey, it looks like Skywarp and okay, fine. Did it come in the typical WST box? Because I don't think the knockoff comes in the same box. Uh, no, I don't think it. No, it didn't. It came with. Uh, the car it, it it had like a cardboard holder and like like literal brown cardboard holder and then like a plastic, plastic cover. Yeah, no, not a, not a plastic not a plastic tray, but like a black uh, uh, the clear the bubble bubble type protective. Okay. It didn't come in the actual WST box, no. Okay. But I was but I was figuring like at the time when I bought it, I was like, oh my god, this is really freaking cheap from like all of the other ones that I've ever seen. So I might as well just buy it if it is the knockoff, and it probably was since it was so cheap. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like so cheap. It was like it was like thirty five dollars for like this little thing. But okay, fine. You know, if it was if it was the knockoff, and it probably was, then then I will just deal with it because he's really cute and tiny. Well, if it makes you feel better, the knockoffs are made. The, the, the rumors that I've heard, that I, I don't know if anybody's discounted these, is that that hero toymaker guy actually, I guess, went to car and made those. They mm -hmm. hired an outside designer to make them, and it was him. And when the line oh, got okay. canceled, so he just kept. So yeah, he when he, the line got canceled, he just kept going with them. Technically, from his original hands. Yes, so it's the yeah. same guy made them. So. Okay, same basic, same vein. Yeah. Just a different line of such. Okay, yeah. Probably from not, the same molds. Probably so. Yeah, but that's, not, that's not bad. I mean, if it is if it is a knockoff, whatever, that's not that big a deal. Because it's a tiny Skywarp, and he is currently the smallest... No, second smallest... Nope, wait, one, two, <laughs> third smallest thing in my collection. <laughs> what do you have smaller than the WST Skywarp? Uh, WST Megatron and WST uh, Shockwave are both smaller than than him. Oh, well, and then I I technically have a WST Blaster who is actually smaller than Shockwave, but he broke. 
I managed well, to. What was the one from Botcon? Yes, yeah. I yeah, accidentally I snapped his his ball joint for his leg. It's he's oh. freaking tiny. Luckily, yeah. he was only like fifteen dollars, so I was like, okay, that that sucks, but fine. <laughs> well, speaking of you know something that should be fifteen dollars in the Skywarp vein, but probably will cost more <laughs> because it's being imported. Uh-huh. Go ahead and just stay on your rant about Skywarp here. Tell us about the Takara awesome. Follow Cybertron Skywarp. I Blaster. like Skywarp rants. Skywarp rants are fun. Well, you just talked about Skywarp and Blaster. Here's exactly. Skywarp and Blaster again. Exactly. Takara, Tomy Generations, Blaster, and Skywarp in package images. So we got these uh, two days ago on the 15th. Um, TF Yuki posted an in package image of the next two releases in the Takara Tomy Transformers Generation line. These ones are uh, Autobot Blaster and and uh, Fall of Cybertron, which is so far the uh, Japan only Fall of Cybertron Skywarp, which means that I'm going to be paying out the damn nose to get it. Um, I like them. I think they're really cool. Uh, the <laughs> It's interesting to see these two right next to each other because Skywarp is on a bubble card and Blaster's in a box. So either that is an incredibly tiny box or that is a really, really big bubble card. Um, because usually when they're in boxes like that, they're usually, aren't they usually like the Voyager size or whatever, the bigger version? Isn't Blaster so, the bigger, vo- he's a Voyager size toy? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, has a vo- he has a Voyager size toy. He is much bigger than Skywarp. So that is the Voyager... Uh, line, but the uh, the Skywarp, the both of them interest me because they are the in the fall of Cybertron war, the fall war, that Cybertrony, the game Con- world t- continuity, that one, the game world uh, designs, which is cool. Um, I don't have any as I look around really quickly. I don't have any. I don't think so. Uh, the war war fall toys. I don't have any of the game toys at all. Um, which interests me because I'm finally going to get this Skywarp in package. Like, I've been, I heard, oh, man, what was it, two, maybe two years ago, maybe three now, at Comic-Con, uh, ran into the designer, ran into the, the toy designer at uh, Comic-Con, and I asked him about uh, potential, uh, a Skywarp potentially coming out in the War for Cybertron toys, because at that time it was just War for Cybertron Um and he said, "Yeah, uh, the Skywarp is out, or the, since the since the Starscream was already said, hey, this is coming out like next month. Um, then the the Thundercracker and Skywarp currently were not seen anything of, and I was like, oh god, because the, the line was also, if I remember correctly, the War for Cybertron line was really short. Yeah, it was tied into the Generations or yeah, yeah. Generations line. Yeah, we got yeah, like five was, figures, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very short. Yeah. We had- um." Bumblebee, Cliffjumper, Optimus, Megatron, Sunwave. Sunwave, yep. Yeah, mostly mostly Autobots and like the 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 Starscream we had seen. If I if I remember correctly, we had seen maybe concept images of the toy, but we didn't actually see like a physical toy by then. But we knew that it was coming. Uh, just didn't know when. And then uh, I think they teased it. Yeah, they did. Every, they, they everybody did. was like, "You have to make Starscream, right?" And like, they did. Uh, they did tease it by then because it was. Uh, I mean, usually because uh, Botcon was before Comic Con. So if I remember correctly, I believe they teased it at Botcon, and that was why I asked the guy at Comic Con, and he had said, "Yeah, these toys are coming out." I didn't know that it was going to take this long <laughs> to get mm-hmm. Skywarp and Thundercracker, and we wow. haven't even seen Thundercracker yet. So yeah, Thundercracker has. We've seen official images. Yeah, from the, 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 oh, from okay. my understanding, Thundercracker is a Hasbro release. Yeah, he's yeah. coming out as Hasbro Skywarp. He's coming out with the IDW figures because uh, he can Spotlight double as an as the Spotlight Thundercracker because the IDW has adopted the War for Cybertron look for some of the Cybertronian modes. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, so then Skywarp. So if you want all three of them, the only two you can get from Hasbro domestically were the Starscream and the Thundercracker. Exactly. So the one you have, the one yeah. from Skywarp so far is Takara only, so it's a Japan exclusive. So um, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be your luck that the one the only one of three you want is the one that's important <laughs> and more expensive? The only one of the three I want is going to cost as much as the other two. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I really hope that Hasbro Plus shipping. You win at failing. I know, comes out with I know. a uh, with a Skywarp. Well see and yeah. It's, that's what it's, will happen. She'll drop the thirty-five dollars for the Takara one, and then, then like the next day, the new story will hit. 
<laughs> that's going to suck, and I, I will hate them forever. But at that point, I will have the first run, the, you know, Japan only, and I'm I'm totally pulling hairs here, and, or, or splitting hairs here, but uh, at this point, I will get the original first run, the Japan one, which is usually better than the... Which, you know, shot your brain. Yeah, yeah, I know. And this is, that's what irritates me, is I kind of, I really am probably just going to wait on Skywarp, and, and this is the only reason why. It's because the Skywarp that we're currently being shown is gray and purple, which is not mm -hmm. the black and purple that Skywarp usually is, which means that he is going to stand out like a sore thumb on my Skywarp shelf, much like that white and yellow-helmed Skywarp one does that's currently on my shelf. I, I always forget where he's from. Machine Wars? G G Machine Wars, thank you. Yeah, the Machine Wars Skywarp. I have one toy of him, and he stands out like crazy. And I probably will hold off on the Takara Tomy Skywarp simply because of that, that gray paint job. I don't like it in the slightest. Yeah, and to wait and see if Hasbro does it in black. Yeah, try and, try and wait and see. And as hopefully as not so as far, much purple. Well, as if, yeah. Well, as if so far, um, from what we've seen... Uh, Takara, for whatever reason, seems to be doing their own things with the colors. Like, usually when you look at Takara toys, they're usually the ones that are more on model, the ones that are more... Uh, slavish to the character. Well, yeah, yeah, detailed and slavish to the character, the ones that look better. And recent in recent history, they've, they haven't been... Like, the, the Hasbro ones have actually been better. Which is a surprise to me. I don't know what's going on over on Takara, so I don't know what's going on, on the Japan side, but we're like going if more we for just the shiny paint, not really the slavish deco. They're trying to catch people's eye. Yeah, like I, I, I do. I love the shiny paint, but only when the shiny paint is like amazing and perfect. I mean, I do have like I have uh, Takara. I have the Takara Blitzwing animated Blitzwing, and then I have the I, I bought the uh, animated uh, Lockdown versus Ratchet set from the animated line. Uh, the, 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 Takara. The super shiny paint, I love them, and they're super pretty, which is great. Um, I have a couple of Japanese toys, but this one I probably will not end up getting, um, like, unless unless it ends up being, like, four or five or six years on the line when, when the Fall of Cybertron toys are clearly dead and they're not going to pick them back up. Then I will probably end up buying it, but only after I wait to see if Hasbro does something with it first. When somebody on the board is trying to unload it cheap just because they want to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, that too. When somebody's trying to, hey, I really don't want this. Five bucks? Nobody, <laughs> okay. I, I paid 35 for it. I don't yeah. really want it anymore. Neither does anybody else, so I'll take 15. Yeah. If somebody's, if somebody's willing to sell it to me for like five or 15 bucks. Yeah. A few years down the line, if Hasbro doesn't come out with one, then I'll end up buying this. Five or 15. If they ask for five 10, or no, 15. If they ask for 10, no deal. It's going to be five or 15. Exactly. <laughs> The um on the other side of that coin though, uh, Blaster and is that Ripclaw? No, no, not Ripclaw. Oh my God. Steeljaw. Steeljaw. Thank you. Steeljaw and 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 Blaster in this small image that we managed to get, they look great. They look really great. The colors are are on par. That red is really striking, which is fantastic. I'm I'm really happy that they didn't decide to go with like a more maroon tint or whatever. Because or Hasbro that, pink. Hasbro pink, yes. The well, the yeah, um. Is also bad. It's like the worst one of those data discs. I know, I know. He's horrible. But the uh, like, cause in Fall of Cybertron, I haven't really had a chance to play it, but I have seen the the screen caps, and I I feel retarded because it's sitting right over there, and I just haven't ever picked it up. <laughs> And I it feel was bad. Awesome. I know it was awesome, but like, I mean, I've got it. It's, it's sitting over there. I have well, Xbox Live, so I could totally play with my friends, but I don't. <laughs> if it had co-op, we could totally play together. I know. I I would I would very much so like to play with my I, friends. I know you gamers are going to want to slap me, but I have still not picked I know. up for Cyberpunk in a while and finished the the the, the, the campaign. I need to play co-op. Just skip together. it. Just skip it. I I I need to Cybertron. throw. Yes, I need to throw War for Cybertron in. I have I have War for Cybertron. I really need to throw it in again because since I got my I have my new Xbox because um, I played I originally bought War for Cybertron and played it on my brother's Xbox, but now that I have an Xbox, I need to get the data onto my Xbox, but I haven't done so yet. No, you don't. No, you just start over. Just start over. Well, well, and that's the thing is that is that I haven't gotten the data from my brother's Xbox, and I don't want to. I want to start over. So oh, yeah. I have yet. I really need to throw War for Cybertron in there, and then immediately right after that, play 
fall of Cybertron, but I'm currently kind of caught on Assassin's Creed, so... Uh-oh. I'm currently, I'm currently in the middle of... Assassinating somebody. Revelations. Revelations was the best. I'm currently in the in middle. No, book. well, right, right now, Brotherhood is the best for me. Revelations yeah. is really close second. I got I really so like, bored with Brotherhood. It took me uh, almost a month to beat. I love Brotherhood. I love Brotherhood. I'm currently stuck on Revelations. I have Assassin's Creed Three here, and I'm probably gonna wait until Comic Con because usually Comic Con does like, oh, pre-order this and you get a T-shirt or a poster or something cool or or a discount or whatever, and I'll probably end up. Uh, Pre-ordering the for the Assassin's Creed the Black Flag. What was that Black Flag? Thank you. Yeah. And it was pirate themed. I just couldn't remember. What it was. That yeah, one I'll probably was good. I uh, I started playing Assassin's Creed three back in December. I still haven't mm-hmm. beat it. Yeah, I I'm currently like I just threw in um I just threw in Revelations like a week ago, and I'm I'm really hooked on it. I love the game. It's a lot of fun. I I tried to start at the beginning, like I really wanted to start at Assassin's Creed 1, despite how horrible of a game it is, I really wanted to start there, but um, Gamefly wasn't being nice to me, because at that time I was also trying to, like I was trying to get these games from Gamefly, but yet Assassin's Creed 3 had just come out, so everybody was pre-ordering it so that they could play, or not pre-ordering it, but renting it so that they could play the games from the beginning and get re-caught up before playing Assassin's Creed 3. And uh, I ended up starting off at Brotherhood, and then went back and did one and two, and now I'm on Revelations. So I still haven't played Assassin's Creed three, and I'm kind of bummed out that I haven't because of the tie-in with the uh, with the end of the world. <laughs> I would have really yeah. liked to play the game when it came out because of the tie-in to the end of the world. But I didn't know that there was a tie-in to the end of the world until like halfway through Brotherhood, and then I was like, oh, oh I hope okay. You're not spoiling this game for people who haven't played. No, no, I haven't. That's always been uh, um, sort of the theme of Assassin's Creed. Uh, Assassin's Creed Three, yeah, no, no, it, I don't think oh, no, it's, it, came it in was never. Hmm? It was two that revealed uh, the end of the world. The end of the world. Uh, yeah, the the twelve twenty one twelve uh, was was written on all the walls in Assassin's Creed Two and in Brotherhood. It was written on the walls when you used Eagle Vision. It was actually it was mentioned in in Assassin's Creed 2, but it was written all over the walls because of uh, Subject how did, 16. How did we get here from talking about Skywalker and Black? Video games. <laughs> Video games. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a total tangent. I, I was trying to bring it back, but it was like I have no idea how to bring this back on topic. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was totally just, my just fault. Just a call out that we're on a huge rabbit trail. <laughs> I know we we I think we changed lanes without signaling. I'm not sure what happened there. It was, anyway, it was you were because you were trying. You were saying that you haven't gotten the fall of Cybertron because you've been playing right. Assassin's Creed. And then and then it was a tangent about I Assassin's Creed because it's an awesome game. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was totally we went down my fault. Rabbit trail. We shot the rabbit. We got the rabbit. We skinned the rabbit and then we cooked it and ate it. It's time to go back to the Transformers podcast. I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> So we were we were talking about how the uh, this, wasn't, this wasn't one of our news stories. And you can hunt and... rabbits in Assassin's Creed Three. <laughs> okay, know that. We're, we're trying to go back to the Transformers, Mike. You're not helping. <laughs> done with Assassin's Creed. Yes, yes. but Skywarp, Skywarp, and Blaster—they look like cool toys. Um, um, I personally will probably end up skipping on both of them for a while. Yeah, I have the Hasbro Blaster, so I don't care. Like I said, uh, the yeah. Steel Jaw is not that great. Um, have you guys seen, and this wasn't in our topic list, um, so we won't, we'll only mention it if, if people have something to say about it. The uh, third party group, uh, Keith's Fantasy Club, KFC, that are making the Masterpiece cassettes. Uh, but they did like the Steel Jaw, and then they did like the Shattered Glass Steel Jaw, and they just announced. Yeah, I've seen some new, of those. Yeah, they did Ram, well, they did Ram Horn the first time, and now this, they're going to do Steel Jaw. Um, I actually have the, uh, the Ram Horn coming in my pile of loot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have Steel Jaw on pre-order. So, what do you guys think about those? Is anybody here got the Masterpiece Soundwave? I know John does. But he's not with us tonight. I um, have touched his his, so I should count. Okay. <laughs> well, I wish I had a Masterpiece I've played Soundwave. With it. I'm waiting for the Hasbro version that comes with all the tapes, so I don't have to spin an arm and a leg. All right. So, if you, we get the the Hasbro Soundwave, are we going to want Blasters tapes just for the heck of having more tapes? I want some of the uh, other Deceptive Untapes. 
You know, we need I, some I want beast all box the tapes. and squawk talk are coming. Yeah. They're also doing yeah. beast box and squawk talk. Okay. Squawk well, box. The, the the moment they decide to design a a pink humanoid cassette, then I'll buy okay. Rosanna to the franchise. Yeah, well, yeah but until they well, they're until doing they make the, me a Rosanna. They're doing the Autobot tapes. Uh, they're, I mean, they're mm -hmm. doing the only other two Decepticon tapes. Well, I well, guess you have two other dinosaurs. Um, well, they, they're doing they Beast Box and Squawk Talk, and then they're doing mm -hmm. Ramhorn and Steel Jaw. All they got to do is an eject and rewind mold, and they can color it like Rosanna. Exactly. Well, like, um, like they did. Uh, wow, name Sundor. Um, and Sundor mm -hmm. was from Kissplay, so. Mm -hmm. um, well, that was Hasbro, right? Yeah, that was that That's was Hasbro. The there's, there's the data disc. Yeah, that was that was the data disc. Yeah, but yeah. still in the data disc line. Hmm. See, I was thinking of we're, we're talking about the Keith's Fantasy Club the third party. See, I am so fucking out of it. I don't like. What <laughs> Sorry, again. Yeah, I had I had moved to that because I was hit, it was a new steel jaw that was better than the data disc is why I brought it up. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, and I was like, okay. they, they did, what they isn't did. better than the data disc? Bakugan <laughs> is better than those data data discs. <laughs> So it's a masterpiece. We're talking masterpiece cassettes, and yes, a masterpiece Rosanna cassette would be great. We See, I might as well just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's the T. It's the T. It's Starscream has I... betrayed you. No, that was Megatron. He keeps, are you sure one of those wasn't the Soundwave T? Because keep rewinding you thirty <laughs> seconds into the previous topic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I heard, I heard the the di the discs, and then you went into the. Yeah. Did you just say Soundwave T and Rewind? No, no, no. See, <laughs> well, no, be see, because we were because we were talking about we were talking about the 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 fall of Cybertron Blaster, and then you went into Hasbro Blaster, and then no, you well, went into this is the data disc, and then all of a sudden we're over here, and I'm just well, like, what the hell? Well, I, well, I even said that the Steel Jaw is really bad. It's an episode Have of Family you guys Guy. Heard of the third party group, <laughs> Fantasy Club. I mean, mm. I, I, I introed the new subject pretty early, I thought. <laughs> oh my god, I should just stop talking. I am sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're it too busy be fawning over breakdown back there. What? You're too busy fawning over breakdown back there. Uh, no, I'm just my head is... around and gushing and then not paying <laughs> I, can, I can pet him. No, oh, yeah, my... I saw where you were petting him. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right, sorry. No, be, uh, good. be good. I am being good. I swear. <laughs> this is a PG podcast. It, I know. I think maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We say is it? I'm not I don't sure. know. We say that's what she said too much, don't we? Uh, <laughs> we? If it's a PG podcast, we have an f bomb to bleep out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have kept the swearing down, but the subject matter gets a little racy. Uh, okay, as racy as Transformers can get. Yes. <laughs> yes. Speaking of racy images, Michael, would you like to talk about the new Sharkscon Megatron images that came out? No. Um, well, <laughs> no, I don't down. want to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I forgot this was coming up. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, we got some better images of the Beast Hunters. Uh, why doesn't this scroll? This is taking me off. Hold on a second. Yeah. Your computers. Right I don't like how I don't like how Google Plus opens up these links. Yeah, I agree. It's it's horrible. All right, so we got some larger images of Beast Hunter's Voyager Megatron if, and all his shark gun glory, and uh, uh, this thing looks pretty freaking cool. The it's earlier a, pictures. Go ahead. He looked almost black. This is a much lighter shade of gray, and it looks much better. Yeah, he's uh, uh he's just so much. There's so much retooling on this guy. I mean, they just didn't spare. It's like the 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 I can't. I, it's I mean, what's not remolded on this? I think it's it's like, it's like just the, uh, his upper arms aren't remolded. And his the sandstorm. Maybe his toes. His hands. Yeah, his thighs and his uh, hands might not be. His toes. His toes. That, that's but yeah, he's, he is extensively remolded, and he looks great. I mean... I want that. Just for the sheer novelty of it, I will display it proudly next to my Fatimus on Prime. Oh my God. I wish they would have done this with more... Of the Decepticons, 
you know, homage. Well, Dreadwing. Dreadwing some... kind of looks like some kind of bird plane. Dreadwing looks horrible. <laughs> I want Dreadwing to be repainted as Tigerhawk. There you go. Because I think he would look awesome as Tiger Hawk. Um, God damn. And there's our first <laughs> word of the show. <laughs> no, I said something worse earlier. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, he's even that. got a piranha gun that turns into a sword. That's so I mean, cool. He looks pretty cool. And, uh, I don't know. I want it, but then I don't know where I would put it. Um, does he. Does, does his, with this thing. Does his weapon lock out? Or is it like the others where it just kind of no, like... I think this locks out. Um, yeah, it looks like I, it's I hope hands. it does. Yeah, it's not... I don't think these... None of these have come with those annoying mech tech weapons. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Or power riser weapons. So. The, 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 the redesigned Decepticon symbol looks pretty cool. Yeah, I... Uh, you can see it on his alternate mode there. It looks like the regular Decepticon symbol, but with much larger mandibles. <laughs> it looks like it's got very, very icky, icky teeth. I think I that that's exactly. that's really cool that they decided to remold or they decided to redesign the Decepticon symbol instead of just slapping a Decepticon symbol on there or giving him mm -hmm. the Beast symbol. They completely made a new one for him, which is cool. That's the first. This is the first time we've gotten a new faction symbol in years, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, we had the Maximals and Predacons. And there the was the one ones. that, uh, the Lion guy and, uh, the R.I.D. line, the P.R.I.D. Oh, uh, Thundertron. Yeah, he had a, oh, yeah, he had a modified well, that, Decepticon symbol. Yeah, that's for those that, two pirate things. I was gonna say, that models. wasn't new as of that toy, though. That was new as of the game. Oh, right, we right, okay. We had that for, like, several months. I don't think he had a... I don't think they've actually had a official symbol for it, though. Yeah, it was... It was. It's on the website. Yeah, the the faction was mentioned oh, yeah. in the, one of the novels that came out, like Exodus or yeah. something. The, you know, All right, the, I didn't uh, read the, any of the, the novels. I just I went through the either. foreign website and went through all the different gibberish I couldn't read and... Yeah. I, 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 about the pirates. Yeah, I, the, the pirates had a new faction and they... But the, we never saw a symbol because it was a novel, so there was no yeah, pictures. It was on there. No, on the oh, website. Oh, was it on the book? Yes. Oh, yeah, I won't. Not in the book. I'm saying I didn't read the book. I went it's to the, the website. It's that MMO, the wasn't it? Yeah, the MMO. When the we Korean, first learned okay. about when we first learned about that game, well, I went the to the website. That even, didn't, they? didn't the books precede even the MMO? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But anyway, the, the the faction symbol for the pirates. Then I guess was the first new symbol we've had since the Maximal Predacon symbols were introduced in like ninety five, ninety six. Otherwise, uh -huh. we've just had Autobot Decepticon since then. So kind of neat they're starting to give us more faction symbols. The movie the logos. Well, it's pretty much Autobot Decepticon, just slightly evil. Yeah, proportions slightly different. Yeah, like those. That's not really. I mean, that's. Just like a retweaking of of the original, so that one doesn't necessarily count. This one's a completely new. I mean, it's not like completely new, obviously, because the the top of it is is the same. But I don't know. I think it's cool that we got a second one. I hope we see that on other toys. I still personally don't believe I'm going to be picking up any of these. Um, but they look cool. Yeah, they did. They do look cool, and I will be gander. I will be you know taking a gander at these from afar. Uh, on people, on other people's shelves. I, yeah. I don't have any place for him, like ever. He's really cool. I won't deny that. No, but... I don't even have much prime stuff anymore. I want the abominus just because it's a combiner, and mm -hmm. I want this just because it's so darn unique. I mean, it's so off the. It's wall. weird. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go on my weird shelf next to Fat Prime. And I, mean, I don't know. I, toys can... I can't think of. No, I'm that's... thinking it because I want, I want the ratchet because the obvious. Uh, Dinobot homage. Dinobot homage, and then I want uh, that Dreadwing because I love that look, even though Ugh. most people hate it. Um, like I said, I, I keep getting that Tiger Hawk vibe from him, and mm -hmm. that's that's cool to me. And so I could I could get Megatron, and they can just stand there as a group of Beast Hunter figures. <laughs> They have no place. They're in the Misfit Toys. How much fun would I'll that costume be, not to me? Uh, 
No comment. <laughs> How much fun would that be? Come on. <laughs> Something I mean, super would, bright like that? It would be a lot of fun to run around in. Not mm. fun to actually make because you'd actually <laughs> have that in front of your face for three months and you might like bleach out your eyes. <laughs> I might then die. Then when you put the costume on, it's going to be dimmed, right? Because you have this this fabric in front of your face and you're like, dude, I can't see anything. I know. <laughs> I've been bleached now. Everything's dark. I know. Everything's dark. I don't get it. it he, that would be really interesting. I mean... They make fabric in those bright colors. <laughs> so I could do it. Not like I'm going to. The the one thing that that kind of freaks me out is his face. Um uh the it, I wish the face was like the silver of like his upper arms because the face actually blends into that blue. Well, it, it, yeah, the, his neck but that all that blue that's just before his chest plate. It just kind of blends in. It kind of melds into one. Um, I I love his head though. The his his head like that chevron where mm -hmm. his eyebrows are and that chevron that that spikes up. It looks really cool. He's I, got like a trident going on. Yeah, there's there's not a single bit of this, you know, like uh, like you said that there's not a single bit of this that isn't. Regular. The most of this is remolded. The only parts that I think are are have been left alone are his cod, his upper legs, and his low and his upper arms. Everything else is new, as far as we know, as far as we can see, which is just cool. You know, I mean, you don't. You don't know. The regular Megatron. Did he have that same face sculpt? No, no. that's a totally new head. Because he's got yeah, like the, the, he's got this like dull surprise look on his face. He's like a like, zombie. The the face sculpt like, uh, and the the whole head as far as like because I know the helmet is different and as far as I remember the face I'm gonna look at my Megatron really quickly the he face kind of zombified is different in yeah the face is different yeah. he's he's got he's like an open funny. mouth I think he almost I think he might have teeth it's hard to tell oh yeah maybe like fangs little with with the with the gigantic fangs on his chest plate if he doesn't have teeth in his mouth I will be very surprised. Maybe that's why he doesn't have them in his mouth because he moved them to his chest. <laughs> oh God! It's like my teeth grew so big they wouldn't fit in my face anymore, so I put them on my pecs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so any more rambling about Megatron? Uh, other than I have to have him, and I like the new colors. These new pictures show us better colors. Mhm. Mm his colors are super striking. Like on any shelf, I think he'd like stand out. Like mad, he's just super bright yeah. and colorful. The the magenta, the the not really magenta, the hot pink and the and that super electric blue that they're using. You know what? I need to put him on a shelf with my G1 Seacons reissue and my Skybite from Botcon with the shiny blue <laughs> thing. <laughs> but all shark stuff. That's where he'll go. Okay. Um, well, we'll move on to our last news story we have for tonight. Now someone needs uh, to repaint that as Depth Charge. Oh Death my Charge. god. Oh, I like it. I like it as Deck Colors. Well, maybe BotCon will do that. They'll give you your, uh... Because he comes with the shark gun and everything. Maybe they'll, maybe BotCon will do that for an exclusive one. You're just to make you go. You'll, you'll get your Depth Charge and your, uh, Thunder, Thunderhawk. Or whatever his name Tiger is. Tigerhawk. Tigerhawk, yeah. From Thunderwing or Dreadwing, or whatever heck his name is. <laughs> getting late. I can't remember names. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need some of that caffeine to keep me awake. Okay. Our Thank last you. news story. Uh, it's a, a third party group, uh, Toy World. Uh, have done a, a massive update for some projects they're working on. They've got their IDW style Optimus Prime to be a counterpoint to their Hegemon, which is like the IDW Megatron. Uh, another one of their throttle boss this time, one based on Chase. Uh, and then we see images of their brainstorm. Uh, we've had a couple different uh, stories of broken. The first one we just saw brainstorm in his robot mode, and then later uh, they reveal a jet mode image. And instead of looking, it's it's really weird because Fans Project is doing their version of some of the headmasters, and they've got a brainstorm coming out. They call it Smart Robin. And I looked at this Toy World version, and I liked the robot mode look better. I thought it looked more like the cartoon model for. Brainstorm back in uh, G1. But then they went completely oddball with the jet mode. They made it look like a Star Wars X Wing fighter. Uh, have you, you guys seen those pictures? Yeah. Uh, what are your, mm -hmm. what, why do you think they would go that route to go so 
off the wall Star Wars reference? I don't know. Uh, creative license, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but they stuck so. I mean, like, you look at their. Um, I can't remember what they called him now. I'm trying to find a good picture. Grind of Rod, it. No, Grind Rod was the toy for the uh, Ronobot. Whatever they called their their hardhead homage. I mean, he was looked just like the G1 hardhead from the cartoon in both robot and alt mode. Yeah, you know, they they kept it real. I mean, they're, even their IDW Prime in this story we see looks pretty much just like IDW Prime in the comic. You know, they're real slavish on their stuff, and then they just go off the wall. You think they did it? Because of Smart Robin, they're trying to distinguish theirs a little. Something different, something new to look at. I can't find the alt mode. Yeah, it was in a different news story. I, wouldn't I saw it somewhere. I can't find it now either. Because yeah. it's only a vague image in my mind. <laughs> okay. I'll let me find it here. Because just... the first yeah, thing I want to say is that it just sort of happened to be that way based on how they wanted to design the robot. And then it was like, hey, it sort of looks like this. And they're like, we can make that work. Well, mm -hmm. the wings are just kind of on the back. They could have put any kind of wing they wanted. You know, they, they, I mean, they could have gone oh, with their standard is. wings. How oh, did you find it? Maybe one of them's a fan. Yeah, like Big Bad Toy Store. store. So yeah, it's definitely got an X-Wing look mixed with I don't know, I almost look like six shot in jet mode. Yeah, I can't I, I guess it's kinda of like a fat X Wing. <laughs> I linked it. Yeah, the X Wing was a little thinner in the nose cone area. Yeah. Oh I yeah, see. It's, yeah. it, but, but it's it looks nothing if you look up pictures of like what, what Rainstorm is supposed to look like, it's he just had single wings going up the side. Mm -hmm. But you think you can it? um rotate them? So they can basically just merge into one wing or whatever. Well, in the robot mode, it looks like they're, if you look at the pictures in the original news story we had from TFW, it looks like they're folded down together, but they're just laying against one another. They don't, they don't look like they clip together into one wing. It's just mm -hmm. much like the X-Wing, they just kind of fold down and touch. Right. So I don't know. I, when I first saw the robot mode images, I thought, okay, I like this better than the fans project one. I'll probably buy it instead. And then they showed the alt mode pictures with those the X-Wing, and I'm like... No. Re repaint it as an X-Wing, make the headmaster like the little orange flight suits from the, the guys wore in Star Wars, and they can sell it as something different, like a Star Wars crossover, but as a mm -hmm. brainstorm, I have no desire. Um, okay, what are you guys' thoughts on the other? Like, anybody, anybody here follow up on them on their throttle bots? I mean, anybody buying those or wanting to buy those? I've seen them. I, uh, I don't know. I'm... Third parties always been something that's been out of my reach, so I don't pay attention to it much unless there's something big that comes out that's like really cool, like Night Morpher, you know, all those Predaking. guys I I look at that Predaking, yeah. Um, the new Minasaur looks pretty cool, um, but yeah, it's always been something like I. There's no point in looking at it, I guess, mm -hmm. so I don't. Um, right. But I've seen some of that stuff, and it, it all looks, you know, real good. Um, I just, I could never afford it and normal Transformers, and I'll choose Hasbro over third party get, just because. You get more for your bang for your buck that way. Yeah. I mean, for a hundred bucks, you could buy with that fifteen dollars of deluxe. Now you're going to get like what six, maybe seven deluxes. Yeah, exactly. Or one, you know, Voyager size third party figure. Mm-hmm. So anybody uh, what about the Optimus Prime that they showed here? Um he's I, really I think pretty. He looks really good. The only thing I'm disappointed with on it is that the truck mode doesn't have enough truck detail stuff put into the side. It's just got lots of random little lines it's and really flat. Yeah. Yeah. Well I mean it, the cab over truck should be flat, but I mean not, not like the, that. They should have a like, sculpted in like a door on the side. You know, yeah. Maybe some steps going up where you climb up into the truck. I mean, you know, just yeah, give there some were, truck detailing. There's so sort of like it needs some details. Let's put some lines. <laughs> just give it random panels. Cybertronian robot details instead of truck details. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the only thing I have against it. Otherwise, I think it looks great. Especially yeah, I think it looks good. It's, um, it's 
he's very very beautiful. It's, I, I'm I'm surprised. Third parties always get me, and I know like they can work off different parameters that like Hasbro does. So it shouldn't surprise me too much, but the the amount of detail that they can pull off on some of these is just brilliant. And and Optimus, despite his truck, the sides of his truck, which is weird, like you said. Like, if you look at it from the front, it's going to be completely flattened on the sides, and that bothers me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, cab overs are, though. I mean, that's the way the trucks are shaped. Yeah. They're I don't supposed know, to be the, flat like the that. The head kind of, the proportions in the head are kind of weird to me. It yeah. is, yeah. He's got a, a he's got a large round. Skull. Yeah. His his eyes are a lot lower. His head's a lot more round, like R.I.D. Yeah. Optimus and less his like, head's his head's a little rounder. He's he's does he have a bigger forehead? He does have. He's, a, he's got a yeah. bigger skull. Yeah. His his like eyes are lower. His I think he's got a brain. bigger forehead. He's very smart. Like just flat out, the eyes are too low on his face. Yeah, I think he looks pretty cool. Down. Hmm. Well, we'll see. I'm sure they'll show us more pictures eventually. We'll see more before he's released. Right. I love the I love the sculpted in detail on the insides of his legs. I was just gonna say that. I they're love the little so pistons. pretty. <laughs> yeah, they're really pretty. I wonder but, if they'll actually put paint on that stuff to bring it out, or if it's just gonna be all molded and colored. I hope they do. Third parties, they don't seem to have well, a there's... budget to do whatever they want. I was gonna say there's enough if if it pops up on here in just all gray, as long as it's not I mean sometimes even painting it could make it harder to see it depending on what color they paint it. Yeah. So like say I the think... inset would be like gray, that might make it harder to see. Yeah, I think right. that's why a lot of these proto prototypes are usually done in this shade of gray is it does a really good job of casting shadows and you know when light hits it. Uh, something mm -hmm. about that matte gray. But once you take that same part and put it in like a shiny black or shiny dark blue plastic, it all kind of washes out. And you can't see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. as like you remember that uh, it was TF Gen One. Um, I think that's what we were going by back then. Uh, we got that gray uh, prototype images of the uh, original Voyager uh, movie Optimus Prime, and that thing looked amazing. And the toy came out; oh, yeah. and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But I actually I can remember getting that toy and thinking it was great at the time because it was such a step forward from what we've been getting in like you know Energon, Cybertron. Yeah. And then we and then we got the O9 Optimus Prime and it made the first one look like junk. I'm gonna put it up real quick as a screen share because um, Skittles is asking for it on YouTube. He hasn't seen what? It's Biobot Project, his Skittles. I'm gonna go ahead oh, and I mean, how could he not have seen this story? It's on Alright, well, TFW uh, is where we Got get it. our new stories from. I think some people prefer Cybertron. Um, mm, it's like we... In any of the big transformers out there want to carry this news. I would just throw a link at him, but uh, YouTube's the YouTube comments doesn't allow links. Ever. So. Oh, that's because yeah. there would be like, way too like, many but... links to porn all the time. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> they probably used to allow links, and that was the reason they don't anymore. That yeah, might be it. Porn and Viagra. If, if they did, Probably. it would have been a really long time ago. Since I've I've been a member since two thousand six, and I don't think there's been links a lot since then. Think about that. It's over yeah. six years. <laughs> Alright, so that's the toy world. I don't know what they're calling it. Um, toy. It's their their Optimus Prime brainstorm yeah. and Throttlebot <laughs> Chase. Shrub they've got their own names. Well, they've got their own names for these things. So I don't know. Brainstorm, what Throttlebot, and then IDW Optimus Prime is what it has on. Yeah, but obviously they can't call them Brainstorm yeah. Optimus Prime. I don't know what name they're calling. I don't know if the story doesn't say. Yeah. But uh, uh, well, Brainstorm is Brainwave, I think, is what they're calling them. Okay. I don't know about the Optimus. Because Megatron was Hege Hegemon, so who knows what they're going to call Optimus? That's what I said, Bushimus. Bushimus. Yeah. Oh, Hedge Bush. <laughs> Shrub. Shrubimus Bush. Be Shrubimus. Shrubimus. Alright. Just reminds me of the knights who say me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so did uh, anybody have any more closing thoughts or any other news articles or stories that just popped up that you want to talk about? Mm, don't think so. 
Um, People need okay. to play Fall of Cybertron. I do. Um, War for I Cybertron. Know. Yeah, yeah. We you can skip that. War for Cybertron. No, yeah, well, I'm enjoying that game. game. That's a it good was, game. It was good, but it was not as the campaign, at least, was as good as Fall of Cybertron. From what I've played, what little I've played of both. Differ. From what little I've played of both, I think the War, War for Cybertron had the better online. Fall it's, of Cybertron has a better campaign. Yeah, campaign was just non-stop story and action, and it was fun. I got bored on parts of the Decepticon campaign. Um, and it does seem very fun. repetitive. On, on, yeah. on, 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 it's very repetitive. You do a lot of the same things over and over, just different scenery and different story. Yeah. Almost and they, out, there wasn't as many. Story. They threw in a lot of new... Uh, enemies to fight and stuff like that. They changed every level was something new. You had a new gameplay mechanic or uh, new enemies and stuff like that. It really, it made the campaign flow. Uh, you know, you never really got bored, except for maybe on the Windows of, level. There's the pros and the cons. I've noticed, uh, like with War for Cybertron, yeah, it feels very repetitive after a while until you get to the boss fights and it's just, you know, depending on which boss, how hard or easy it is. Um, but you still had the story to keep it fun and interesting, which was good because once you get the hang of the play controls, you, you can just play through. If you're somebody like me who doesn't really care what the challenge is, you just want to play the game to see the story. Ball, like Grandma, he's different mm. than the other characters, and you've got Rubicus, who plays different. Right. Um, so, but, but, but somebody like me who doesn't game a lot, it's like all of a sudden, crap, now I've got to learn a, how to control a new character a different way. So a lot of it, to me, that's going to be a little more frustrating when I finally get around to it. It was pretty... It's pretty much just he swaps out the function of one of the buttons, really. It's like instead of grappling, you're, you know, cloaking and stuff like that. It was... But that's you know, got to be really frustrating when you're just like, I'm going to grapple up this thing, and you can't. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, hardly ever, of... I hardly ever use the special powers. I'm just yeah. shooting and jumping and running. <laughs> I was like, it, oh, crap, this guy, i got to do something different. Well, the special powers in, think, in War for Cybertron were nothing too. special. And Fall of Cybertron, they sort of, they introduce them to you. It's like, oh, okay, so Jazz can grapple, and then We're gonna put like, that in the level okay, now. Cliff Jumper can go invisible because he immediately goes invisible, and it's just. This should have been Mirage. You know, well, they we didn't have Mirage. Excuse they them. They had to stick to a line continuity, and they had to, you know, Cliff Jumper has to be a character because he was a character in Prime for one episode before he got killed. He's been in flashbacks. Okay. Well, I guess that'll do it uh, for this week's episode of TF. I'm still waiting for the... I'm still waiting for the uh, tailgate repaint. Yeah, we got it as a Cyberverse <laughs> Le Legion. I have it right Yeah. Here. Yeah, I have him yeah. too. I'm still waiting for the for the full-size one, though, because I will probably end up getting that one, and that's going to be the only version of the Cliff Jumper mold I have. <laughs> I have the first edition and the Prid, and I will buy tailgate whichever one of those inside the repaint. God knows uh, it's going to happen. I hope it happens, because, hey, I, I would like to give Hasbro my money. It would have to be the first edition one, because uh, I did not like the Prid. The Prid one wasn't bad. It just kind of paled in comparison to the first edition, but it still yeah. wasn't a bad toy. So. My problem with it is I transformed it, and I'm like, well, that was boring. <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's my problem. That's my only problem with it, man. Well, again, I think that's because of the first edition. The first edition was so good that it followed that, and it was a tough act to follow. Um, if it never had the first edition, I think it would have been better received. Uh, it's my opinion, though. Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one, and most of them stink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that'll do it for this week's episode of TFYLP, uh, episode 55. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed listening. Uh, feel free to head on over to Geek Existence and... Uh, sign up on the forums and leave us some questions if you'd like us to answer your questions during the show. Uh, or if you know you're watching the live stream, just go over to the YouTube page uh, and you know leave questions in the comment section. And if we see them, we'll try to answer them as long as they're pertinent to the show. Uh, we thank you for listening and hope you'll join us again in a couple weeks. Goodbye, everybody. I'm going to go play Bye. with my Creos. Bye. <laughs>